that beast cutie puppy boy great set but that was only the appetizer of the day the entree the main dish of the day marine lord versus the viper arguably two top three players in the world facing off for so much on the line exactly you know whoever makes it through here will make at least twenty thousand dollars out of golden league whoever falls the best they can do is twelve thousand five hundred dollars i believe it is so a notable decrease and on top of that of course both these players currently neither of them being qualified for red bull wallalo legacy at least the age of empires 4 edition plenty to play for on the line indeed one of the, you need to win one of the two next sets here for marine lord or viper one of two is enough to make it go through, go to Heidelberg, play the biggest Age of Empires tournament of all time. But actually, they are playing the biggest Age of Empires 4 tournament of all time, making it to the semi-final tier, showing that they are a top four in the world. And now we go into Abbasid against Delhi Mirror, and we have, well, interesting approaches. Typically, the Viper, not really the guy who goes for berries early for Abbasid or for Delhi. Let's see if he maybe switches this up. Typically, most of the players going for the berries early on. Viper, as you can see, he's the guy that's going for sheep compared to all the other top players. Yeah, and I think that's why you mentioned like the, the mirror side of things. Like both these sieves like their berries, right? That's what it becomes it comes a race for. Is moving now onto these these pocket ecos, trying to extract the berries because of course you get that increased gathering rate. The capacity did get nerfed a while back. It used to be you got 500 berries on each of these when you put a mill near them. Now it's only 350 up from the default 250. It's still an improvement, but it means that you tend to move out from the safety of your base a lot quicker. And I think the sieve that suffers more from that out of these two is typically the Abbasids because the Delhi, of course, have a lot of aggression and a lot of reasons to be aggressive via their production efficiency and their desire to play around those sacred sites. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sacred sites is obviously going to be indirect pressure or direct pressure even towards the Abbasid because if we think, okay, we go 2TC, maybe even flirt with 3TC, he has Abbasid, thinking that the Delhi player won't go onto a lot of army. Well, if you face three sacred sites, you need quite a big amount of villagers to try to compensate for that one. Most of the time, not going to work out. You will face an early castle age pressure, won't really hold too easily. So we will think the Viper is going for some army, try to contest those sacred sites instead of adding the TCs early on. I feel like Marine Lord, like... Right now, this is an interesting build going on the Stragglers trees. We've seen some players that do prioritize this. Uh, I wonder if he's going for a little bit more of a greedy condensed play for a slightly quicker feudal age by doing this choice. As I, I feel like Marine Lord is the only player I frequently see do this with the Delhi out of like the top 20. And I've watched a lot of Delhi games. Ugh, I can't believe I'm saying that out loud. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Okay, so what are the approaches here? We stay on gold for both players. We see, oh, look at that. Improved deer hunting for Marine Lord. So goes for that, tries to go for the mill at one point then as well, or for the aggressive mills at some point. Hmm. Interesting choice. Over professional uh, scouts. Ah, I'm surprised yeah. as well. So I, I, in fairness, I see Marine Lord do this more frequently than most other players. Um, even back before it was part of the ball build up, like he would frequently go to this, even with the old version, right? Where it was maybe a little bit less valuable than it was right now because they increased the gathering rate on it. He did prioritize this a lot. Peculiar choice overall. I feel like he can get away with pocket ecos because typically Abbasid players are less aggressive. And also in this matchup, their aggression should be directed towards sacred sites. Also, we don't need to go too crazy, right? Right now, you can't really research anything else. So just wanted to have something queued up after wheelbarrow as well. Doesn't mean that he actually wants to go out because deer feels kind of tough to protect. Now goes for PT as well. And well, Viper, let's take a look. Still no, was he lacking gold? No, he has now. Okay, fresh food stuff's flying yep. in. All going to plan. And of course it comes a lot quicker than it used to, right? One of the small patches they added is they reduce the research speed of the first tier of techs in your house of wisdom. So now it only takes 30 seconds as opposed to the old 60. Ooh, Viper is going for stone. And that's four villagers. That's not four arrow slits, my friends. That is actually for the town centers. So, interesting approach. Barracks here for Marine Lord. So, Viper will accept that some sacred site control will go into Marine Lord's favor. Viper trying to compensate with more villagers. 
Curious to see if Marine Lord is going to play in towards Palisades. It's something we don't actually see anymore from the Delhi players, right? It used to be the dominant way to take control of Sacred Sites, but most players are now prioritizing outposts. But that does mean that you've got idle villagers running out and building those up, right? So it can sometimes be safer to just rely upon Palisades, especially if you assume your opponent is going to play mainly into ranged composition as opposed to melee units that can torch them down. Marino, by the way, cancelling the faster hunting upgrade goes for professional scouts now after all. So makes lots of sense and tries to get them a bit closer. Viper only 150 stone away from building his first town center. Still big question mark where he wants to build it and how heavily he's committing to army behind this. Hmm. And considering Marine Lord hasn't gone for a second military production building yet, which he's now fixing, it seemed like he was actually going to stack more scholars for the quicker research rate. But now with the drop of the stable, this should just be your atypical push scholars out towards sacred sites, get good gold, gold, be really happy, big smiley, go castle age. <laughs> yeah, 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 big smile for sure. The question though, Viper with a stable, that's not really the right comp or like right answer to this, right? Maybe some camel archers could have worked out a bit better. Blacksmith on the later side, only 615 started here. And it feels like Viper needs to add something in addition to the stable. It cancels the stable. Huh. Interesting choice here. I don't mind him canceling the stable if he now replaces it with a Rax and just plays ultra defensive, but an archer range instead is problematic here. Like, horsemen will flood through. And remember, you're playing against the Delhi, so once they get their production efficiency research, they can bank scholars inside these buildings, which makes them effectively two military production buildings in one, which is a hefty saving compared to other Civ's choices, right? Because usually you pay 150 wood to get an additional building down. Well, you're the Delhi, and you have got your scholars being built for half the price, which means you're paying 75 gold for a second military production building. Mm -hmm. Well, but the scholar can't do anything else at that time, but obviously can be used later on if you don't want to use your stable anymore. Mm -hmm. That mill is apparently not scouted. Quite interesting that he built the mill and pulled the villager away. Didn't even leave a single villager there to gather the food. Huh, I wonder if he's trying to get like two research. Yeah, he's getting two researches at once, that's why. So it sets him up for later, but now also he's got two techs being done at the same time, right? You can see he's getting the horticulture there, and then back in base, uh, I believe he's now rounding out on the Pro Scouts. This is going to be... Oh, it's Nicole a very refuses to keep that building. though, right? Like, I, I, I'm kind of curious as to what Marino's thought process is in terms of not prioritizing horticulture back in base. Mm, probably professional scouts. How many scouts does he have? He's playing with only two, though. Hmm. It's a bit surprising, for sure. Ten seconds, survival techniques I... after this one. Now second blacksmith. And feels like he wants to get the deer carcasses closer to his mills. First berry bush, now running dry. I, I think actually what it is, Nilly, like uh, what made me kind of scramble with it a little bit is because he was going for an alternative tech first before switching over to pro scouts. But the logic here is if you get horticulture, you drain the berries too fast and then you have nothing to gather from. So it, it does make sense in, in the wider scheme of things. Um, it was just, it was kind of interesting the delay approach that Marine Lord had. How's the scout out running the horseman? What's happening here? Uh, is this just, he must be microing. I think he's over microing. That's the only reason that would make sense. Like, unless scouts have suddenly discovered nitrous a few hundred years before the rest of, of, of mankind. Um, oh no, the boar as well! He aggroed it! Oh, Viper, that's a Marine Lord level play because he always does this against his opponents, but instead he beats him to the punchline. I oh, love watching so these nice. two, actually. These two are so phenomenal at early boar aggression. Pulls it again, pulls it again. Look scholar. at that. Goes for the Scholar. And Scholar can't defend himself. Nope, and he has no one to heal him either because he only has one scholar out here. This is so cheeky out of Viper, I love it. Be on the other side. A scholar going down, worth it for the Camel Archer trade out. Such a great play. Scholar now goes to the top. Feels like it's a bit safer there. That's a nice created base though and something Viper can't really contest. He's six villages ahead though. So sacred side advantage resource wise still on Viper's side. I mean, like, my favorite part is Marino runs that scholar to the north. Like, it's safer here. And it's like, oh, wait, there's a boar here as well. Oh, no. <laughs> but luckily for him, Viper has vacated the area. Meanwhile, Marine Lord, sir, sir. A bit sir, 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 you, we, we paid you for those goods already. Can you drop them off? <sighs> Marine Lord is the guy who brings his own food to a restaurant. <laughs> I mean, right now, it's like, 
Hello, I'd like to report a crime. Yes, it was the crime. I stole from myself. What? <laughs> please, can, can you just please explain this crime? I may have forgotten to uh, to drop the food off at home, Mom. Oh, no. That's so frustrating as well, because remember, scouts move slow when they're carrying carcasses, so he's actually like taking longer to get out to just get one carcass this time compared to what it should mm -hmm. be. And the other one, yeah, the other one went uh, as slow as well. Yeah, because it's oh, formation, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, yeah, it, it takes the, the speed of the slowest unit when you're in select like, formations, folks. So a top tip for, like, if you want to disengage from a fight, and let's say you've got, like, archers and man-at-arms, like, peel your archers off so they get away quicker than your man-at-arms, because also your archers shift to the back of formation, so it's doubly bad. Mm hmm How are now doing the protective thing that he was built for horseman now as you can see actually faster than scouts so finding some damage through third sacred site now under build though viper look at that not too far away from castle edge but we can say the same for marine lord who is oh, 11 off. villages behind question what army composition we are going for afterwards marine lord that, that was interesting actually he didn't hard commit the horseman to get rid of the camel archer really important there because if you get rid of the camel archer you remove that aura that's decreasing your damage by 20 percent you're at a 20 percent deficiency against viper's horseman and you have left uh, less in the field but it's all a distraction at the end of the day marine lord as we can see as you're saying like you know he's making his way up in towards castle age and has all three sacred sites which means viper's notably going to be slower because he's going to feel a need to invest in more military troops now mm -hmm. He had enough food at one point. Uh, added another volley. Didn't really have enough gold there to pick up. Uh, that's are these? Not pretty. Are these? A, I don't think these are basset people. I think this is the English right now because I, I know cues when I see them. Those people were very good at queuing for that food. <laughs> Only eight villagers can queue around or can go for a deer there. We had more, <laughs> and now they need to go to the other side. And that looks like the UK economy after Brexit a bit. Yeah. All right. We're gonna need. Uh, we're gonna need some new food imports somewhere. And of course, you know, you, although they're cheap, you can't eat villages, even though they're only 25 food. There we go. I got my own one cannibalism comment in for the broadcast. People are starting to get suspicious of me. I'm getting suspicious of how Viper's going to stop this decap. It's going to get more frustrating. Like, you can see, he's holding on to all three sacred sites. Yes, it's nine minutes away. But now with the tech up coming out and a flood out of troops, this could get slightly uncomfortable for Viper. Oh, 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 oh count, no! <laughs> oh, stuck between uh, a rock and a hard place. Well, wooden hard plays in this situation. Oh, villagers dealing with that one quite nicely. Marine Lord now going for, look at that, an elephant archer even. Yo. Ooh. Interesting choice against camel archers, right? Because, well, they are cavalry, so they get their damage reduced by 20%. Yeah, but still, like, the elephant is mainly living from the fact that they are never dying. And nothing really kills them, right? That's true. So, I think you're still fine, even if you don't have the craziest damage output. It's kind of crazy how we don't really see any plays around man at arms at the moment out of the Delhi. And it kind of shows you the importance of what you want to do on these type of maps. Like Dry Arabia is all about mobility and fluidity. And although you do have Forced March, which is a phenomenal tool for the Delhi, players just aren't really valuing it right now. Well, long, at least Force Viper back for a moment as he takes a small break. And that break is long enough for reinforcements to arrive. But he focus fires with the Camel Archers and will snipe out the Scholar. But we'll lose the Camels for it. Mm -hmm. This is both of them. Sacred so side. probably oh good situation. Sacred can, side getting neutralized. Yeah, but he can interrupt this. He's got reinforcements coming in. This is actually getting uncomfortable. Like I was talking about it before, but Marine Lord now is seven and a half minutes away. And although it's not like, oh my god, two minutes away, panic. It's getting there, right? He's never actually forfeiting these sites. And every time he doesn't forfeit them, he's also gaining a lot of gold. Because remember, the Delhi do get 150 gold per minute for each sacred site they control. Mm -hmm. Pretty massive for sure. Viper now mainly goes for Spearman with Phalanx and Crossbows. So we'll have a reasonable counter against all this cavalry that we can see on the field. Spearman count at two, though. So <laughs> numbers not too impressive. Uh, Yeah, I think you're going to get quite a few more out than that, buddy. And they're going to be slow to get out. And also the upgrade now coming out for them at least. But the, the frustration is these tower elephants. We've seen that... Although you'd expect spears to be a counter to elephants, they, they really aren't. They, they struggle because if you just run away from them, if you drive by them, the archers on top, they die too quickly to actually be effective. Well, Phalanx is actually helping out in finding more of those kills, right? Yes. You now see some Springfield emplacements on Marine Lords, and where does he even have the towers? I don't even know. The, the only issue with the Phalanx is like gap closing, right? 
is like Phalanx is good if your opponent runs into a mess, but if he keeps peeling back and also formation shuffling, it's almost impossible mm. to surround or even get your double down value. Yeah, 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 I agree. Four relics, by the way, on the way for Marina. That's now crazy. the first elephant, and we can see how good they are now. And yeah, as you mentioned, getting away there is not going to be easy. Viper trying to regroup. Still a solid 25 villager lead for him, is... so he has to be happy with that. But military numbers not on the field like he wants to. I've just got to say it now. Marine Lord is genuinely the best deli player in the world. I, like, every time I watch him, he does this. Like, he's very good at taking all sacred sites and holding them. And also, you highlight the relic play. I've seen this multiple times. Instantly, as soon as Castle arrives, grabbing all the relics. Because you can with your scholars out in the field. This is something a lot of Delhi players don't prioritize. A lot of the time, they will capture the sacred site and then go back oh, to base to get keep. more research. Aggressive keep. And yeah. Uh oh, this is going to be tricky. Yeah, this and is going to be problematic. And really have too much to kill. Oh, no. no and only two elephants big. won't be enough to protect this. This is actually big. Look at the woodline situation right now. Viper is far away from his secondary woodline, so he doesn't have clear access. This could be a problem right now. And you see, he tries to get it between the two, and now the villagers, they pull out. They're going to move across now to try and torch it down because the elephants went the other way. Keep defense to be constructed by Viper. The torch is out. Heavy damage can be done, but will it be enough is the big question mark here. It looks like it might not. Elephants are moving south side. Defensive keep was successful for Viper, but if this keep goes up, Viper is in trouble in the wood department because he'd have to shift all the way to the north side. And it looks like, although it's barely alive, this keep should survive. And once it is up, it's up. The torch damage is reduced further. Oh, it would have gone up with like 1200 HP if oh there was no army God. coming over, but it seems like enough. Crossbows won't really find the kill. And now the elephant archers are so good. The keep is Wait. going up two and a half K HP. He's got enough for another keep. Marino can keep going. He can go deeper if he wants to. He's got 800 stone in reserve. He also went Compounder Defender. We didn't even talk about this yet because everyone is always doing House of Learning. Compounder Defender is a remarkable tool because if you get your hands on the village fortresses, it's actually more cost efficient to build keeps than it is to build town centers, which allows you to eco boom up at this point in the game. Oh, town center now under some threat. Three elephants. Next keep indeed. And we see Villager Fortress now as well. Wants to boom up with the keeps. Wants to build further ones even more. And Viper actually goes for the counter attack. Has one sacred uh. side neutralized. Feels like he can't really address those keeps. Yeah, but look at the wood shift, the great migration. Viper, half his economy just shifted to the north and wood line. That's how much of an important detail this was. He blocks out the farms, he blocks out the wood safe near base, and it forces this extension for Viper. And notice his food situation right now. The berries are sustaining for the moment, but he was relying on this TC. This TC that couldn't even focus far on the scholars because it's a secondary town center. It goes down, keep goes up. Marine Lord on his way towards village fortresses, and now with a way of not only taking the resources away on the front line, but also extending his influence and even building building up a base there. Oh, would be really funny. It's kind of protected, right? I'm not even sure if you can over... Can you overtake farms of your opponent? I don't think so, right? You can no. only attack them. No, you, yeah. you, you okay. blow them up. <laughs> you're, living, you're living in a reasonable world here, nearly. Like, it's, this is a farm. I understand where you're coming from, but I don't know. I guess the Basi people just eat a different type of food. Okay. Well, Viper's still with quite some problems here, right? He can't really attack the keep aggression here next to his starting town center. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Could He's we in. think about the landmark victory? House it's of hard. Wisdom, starting town center there. Yeah, 12,000 HP on the House of Wisdom. It's not going to be easy, but right now, look what's happening. Viper was trying to ignore this aggression and set up his own aggression, but now he can't. Now he has to start reacting. He's getting the trebuchets out. That's a healthy, a heavy investment, rather, into the wood department to get the siege workshops online, because remember, the Abbasids, although they can build siege in the field, they cannot build trebs. And there's nothing necessary to stop Marino from diving for that. For the moment, let's go play it safe. The head pads have arrived. The Skull is going to start healing up any damage done, and... The pressure is mounting up. Viper needs to get reinforcements in the field ASAP and find a way of flank attacking these elephants, but it's not going to be easy with the assistance of the keeps. Oh, oh, the villagers, they're the massacred! The, uh, oh, the villagers uh, Look at the eco need to count. be pulled here. Uh-oh, uh-oh, only 17 the lead now. He was up to 25, and that was quite some time ago. Look at that, all the elephants now healed up. The, those town centers are completely empty, so no snipe on those. <laughs> That's ambitious. That's overly ambitious. The head patterns get back to work to try and save him, but it's all a distraction. Three sacred sites once again under the control of Marine Lord, and the formation shuffle! It saves Dumbo! It gets him out! He stays alive on a sliver of HP! But the head pass cannot keep him alive indefinitely. He will go down, but a heavy price again for Viper to hold. And still, these keeps are of eternal frustration, a thorn in his side that will not easily let up. 
Ooh, 20 population lead for the Viper here, although his main base is not looking too pretty, but he boomed away quite nicely. Should easily deal with that tower elephant as well. But obviously Marine Lord still back to three sacred side control. Maybe some raids here, but it feels like Marine Lord should be able to deal with those quite easily. Someone else another keep, don't tell me it's another keep. Yeah, oh. it is. It is. I mean, like, come on. Like, you need that safety to get rid of those landmarks, right? If he's not going to stop you building them, don't stop building them. Because remember, they're going to push villages that will be able to extract wood from your opponent's side of the map and also repair any damage done to these keeps. For the moment, though, he plays it safe. He sees heavy damage coming out from the trebuchet. He's only one trebuchet, so with enough villages, he can actually just overwhelmingly build this up. In the meantime, he starts to focus fire onto all the military production builders to make sure that Viper cannot build up an army. And, and to your point around the eco lead, like, yeah, you're up 21 villages, but let's actually be real about the maps here. Three sacred sites worth 450 gold, so that's over 10 villages. And then on top of that, he has five relics worth 500 gold passively. So actually, when you do the maths at that, like if you give a rough estimate of like 40 resources per minute per villager, they're actually neck and neck here. Like Viper does not have a lead. Mm -hmm. It's over 20 villagers for sure. And now that's getting chased down. Nice job here by Viper. Gets oh, the force no. around. Re beautiful move. <laughs> With Perfect the crossbowman in the formation as well. Like, you wouldn't have expected this. Mm -hmm. Helps up with the surround there for sure. And Viper basically only slightly had in military. Has quite some gold floating for himself. Goes for more crossbow, goes for more spearmen. But now Villager Fortress is about to finish. And then Marine Lord should be evening out the Villager count. I mean, he'll move ahead, right? Because it's going to be three TCs effective versus one. Does That's he have enough food income, though? That's the big question. Can he afford fully if, going for If he takes the deer the behind his keeps now, yeah. The, the deer that right now I think Viper actually has some villages on, so that's going to be a problem for him as well. Looks like decaps at least coming through, but these small raids are just inconsequential in Marino's eyes. It's not doing enough damage fast enough for him to actually react. And, I, oh, that's a siege workshop as well. But this, is, this is where he's getting ready to file nail on the coffin. If Viper cannot get rid of Trebs on this front line, he's going to lose those landmarks. Yeah, so true. How many traps does Viper have? He has two on the map, three sprinkles with this one. He has the speed upgrade, but I'm not sure if that will really help him. Now goes for the raids, but it feels like oh Marino is protected God. enough. I, the, the, the skulls on these elephants. I'd be getting concussion halfway through this, but they are just non-stop, and any damage done is instantly healed up thanks to free medcare in the Delhi Sultan Empire here. And keep in mind, by the way, he can afford full price gold on these scholars on the front line build them out that mosque there because he has all this passive gold incoming it's the one resource he can afford indefinitely so crazy so crazy town center is going to fall house of wisdom 12,000 hp but you still need something to address this trap count still only at two i don't think you will deal with those keeps too quickly now dives in but under two keeps i don't think you can take this fight if you're viper the ball and all it's gonna be tight he'll get that research as well it's gonna be a big deal these keeps are gonna be more strong and marine lord look at the resource right now he can afford two additional keeps if he chooses and he can look to crawl in and keep in mind now that he has the ability to push village at the front line that might be an option first of all he needs to stabilize his food though look at his food this is very unusual for Marine Lord, just being so out of tune with his own eco, barely having enough to float villages out of his main TC, let alone these fortresses as well. Oh, Viper with the counterattacks. 35 population lead for the Viper. It's nine elef tower elephants actually on the field. But it's not enough. He has nothing else. And Viper, it's just playing a great game of maneuvers. And he's making his way in, but this House of Wisdom is not an easy target nearly. It's 12,000 HP. It's going to take you a long time to get through this. It feels like you needed that third keep up to make this a reality. And now, losing your, your staging point, your keep that was crawling in, you're running out of space to maneuver, maneuver here. And it means that Viper's just going to die through. You don't have enough of the scholars to keep you fully sustained. Your trip count is not scary enough right now. Viper is starting to cut into you here. And if you have to fall back from this area, you're in trouble. Oh, Scholars are getting sniped as well. Springouts are around, down to one single Scholar now. And that one is getting sniped as well. Now the Elephants are alone, and that what? makes them so much weaker. But what's Marino doing with his gold? He can actually, like, he could actually afford to build another mosque and push Scholars non-stop. And that would be a good strategy in this situation to out offset any damage done to the Elephants. But instead, like, you're missing the, the trick here. You're not getting enough of these Scholars out. You're floating over 2,000 surplus gold with a ridiculous amount of passive income. I'm kind of perplexed. Like, he hasn't fixed his food issue either. He is at least now boosting his eco count. If you notice, like, there's been a huge crawl up now, 68 compared to the 77. And it's because he did build a keep back in his base, he will have a secondary TC in a safe area of the map. 
Mm -hmm, yeah, really nice observation. It's really close and it feels like Marine Lodge should have more resource income now. Simply because of still one sacred site for himself. That one is getting interesting. Three scholars sent into death, basically. But, oh, elephant no, asses no, are coming no, over no, no, for that, the not rescue. Not with that speed, Nilly. Not with that speed, dude. These guys are NASCAR drivers, just they don't even need the car. It's ridiculous that movement speed buff you can get where they move up to 1.5 movement speed per second. I don't understand why that was ever needed. Uh, down to 8k HP. Now some villagers here for the defense. I don't think those traps will survive though, because five sprinkles will obviously easy to deal with those. Uh -huh. Does he want to commit? Feels like the keep is going to fall as well. Viper's pushing this one back quite nicely. Strap number two in danger. Maybe focusing down on the elephants could also be an option. It keeps gone though. Strategy needs to be reassessed now from Marine Lord, but look what Marine Lord done with all that space. He denied all this equity. He shut down Viper's Eco Boom. He took out his expansion TC. And now, for the first time in what feels like the entire game, Marine Lord is up with the Eco Advantage above the village account of Viper. Ooh, this is such a good game, number one, in this very promising set. What a wild army composition are we seeing here? Where's the farm? Like, look at Marine Lord's income. He has 2k wood, but he doesn't have the food sword. He must be transitioning now. There's no way he's still failing to make a full switch in the farms. He finally reoccupied the ones at the back. He's starting to build a huge ah. cluster in the center. And this is where he gets online. And look how well protected they are. These keeps, remember, once you have village fortresses, they do everything a town center does, including a drop-off point for resources. Oh, that's so smart. Now the spearmen are coming in. Only one single scholar there for the re for the healing. One elephant down could be maybe more. Those crossbows obviously Yo. not the greatest damage dealers. It's mainly the damage from the spearmen. Those crossbows mainly to snipe down the scholars. Yeah, that, that's the thing. You just need to get rid of the scholars. Like the head patterns are pretty strong. Like herbal medicine is ridiculous. For those wondering, like why is herbal medicine allowed? Uh, there was a ruling made that you know for Golden League, like in the early days, we had to ban it because it was a fuel age tech. It got moved to castle age, and that was deemed to be fair, which is why you are allowed to get your hands on herbal medicine now. Seven scholars in the queue and one elephant. Nothing else. <laughs> that's five deadly. scholars in the field. Viper gets another raid in, but Marine Lord, five villagers ahead, one sacred side ahead and five relics ahead. This keep was really good for Marine Lord. It stabilized all of his issues. His woodline was getting raided. His farmland expansion was getting raided. His TC wasn't buffering his opponent way, but now it's just one keep. Not only does he boom his eco better, but he also protects all of what he's booming. Reels for some long distance damage. Obviously not the craziest elephant killers, right? No, you so can basically some reasonable damage in. heal this. <laughs> like if you really want <laughs> to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Frustrating situation right now is Marine Lord, he's hoping this game would be over. And the problem you have now that you arrive at this state is the Delhi, is like, unless you continue to resource starve the Viper, like, you're going to lose in Imperial, right? Because, like, Imperial is almost forbidden for Delhi players. You need to win in Castle. And the Abbasids, they get very strong in Imperial, getting access to things like Comps and Bows, where the Arch units become incredibly effective. I think Viper should even consider going for, like, three town centers now. He didn't have Town Center for such a long time. Only added one like two minutes ago, as we saw. I think he needs to get onto proper numbers. Save that one. Okay, so he's back to two Town Centers. So reasonable reboom yeah. could happen, but Marine Lord will just outboom him. Neutral market placement. Really good. Oh, wait, wait, wait. That's not a neutral market. No, that's... Yeah, I mean, that's if, it, if, if neutral what? market spawned there, I've got I've got problems. Right? Like, this game's got problems. And look, he's doing the efficient strategy. If those unaware, this is something cool you can utilize. If you go into trade in your game, you want to set up a marketplace on the other side of the map and then one right next to the neutral trade. The logic is that... Okay, that's not what you do. Don't do that. <laughs> what you want to do is you spawn these traders and then you set their home market to the one on the other side of the map. It means that they will just walk a few feet away to the neutral marketplace and then return to the one on the other side with the full bounty, which means that you half the time it takes to return the investment into traders. Don't do what Marine Lord just done, though. Like, he done half of it correct, the other half... I, Sacra Blue, I don't know what the hell's happening here. He's still doing it. He's still doing it. Well, yeah, if you, if you misclick it once, you won't notice for quite some time. Yeah, not with the amount of passive gold you have as, uh, in this game as well, right? Like you've got two sacred yeah, sites yeah, yeah. and you've got five relics. He's got 800 <laughs> passive gold. He's probably never going to notice this. <sighs> Population getting relatively even. Obviously, that's not really a good fight for the Viper here against all those elephants. Spearman count, not that great. Oh now, goes for some archers. Look at it what go. are we achieving with those? 
I mean, he, I think he wants to prep for Imperial. He wants to go Imperial, and then he wants to get composite bows. He thinks it's a cost-effective unit to trade out. You have to remember, like, crossbows, like, you know, they don't get bonus damage against these units. Archers might seem a little bit more cost-effective. Maybe it's the gold. I think it's gold, actually. Yeah, look at gold for Viper. 100 income per minute. That is a small boy treasury right there. That is a saving all your pennies for Christmas and still not being able to buy your favorite present because he's ran out of gold and thus he doesn't have the better unit to deal with the elephants. The keep's gonna go down and now the elephants can just blitz through you. The free healthcare are a little bit too strong and all of a sudden the sprills and trebuchets need to run for the high heels because the elephants are coming and they don't eat leaves anymore, they eat wood. Okay, luckily Viper finally finds the rest of his army. He must have felt like, wow, I have 70 military on the map. How am I losing against 40 military? But now at least pushing this one back. Nice archer harassment here at the right-hand side. Springles doing their job. And lead Viper out of gold spots to take. <laughs> Only the one above the screen here. Something that you could yeah, use. Yeah, one you're not going to get for free. These elephants, they will fight two for now. The worst part is Marine Lord can afford to replace them indefinitely. You can't afford to replace the crossbows and springles and trebs should you lose them. And look, they even get in melee range. Worst case situation. Turns on the springles, takes one out. That's a freebie. And these springles, they don't deal with elephants that well. We've seen the measly damage, about 25 per shot. Scholars, if they want, can keep you alive through that damage, especially with the measly attack speed of these springles. Wait, the trebs? Oh, trebs? Trebs? Viper? Oh no, he's looking elsewhere. He's got to be. There's no way he's focusing on this fight. He's losing the entire siege army. He pulls them back now, but that's a heavy loss for a guy who has no gold and is running out of wood fast. Uh oh, one single sacred site. All his gold income goes for some more raids here. But now over 20 yes! population behind. Finally, the traders being set Perfect up properly. Up. We'll get some raids there. And uh, feels like Viper needs to find some more gold control. But how? Maybe trade? I hear it's pretty good. Especially if you uh, click it on the right one, which is what Marino has done now. 169 gold per trader. Now he has infinite gold, as if he didn't already with Sacred Sight plus Relic Control. This is just ridiculous. Like, this is greed right now. Marine Lord, all of his hair's about to fall out. He's about to start talking about preciouses because he's clearly Smeagol. Marine Lord, crazy Q. Now he even uses the Blacksmith for some... Oh. Didn't use it for quite some time. Seven more tower elephants in the queue. Another keep goes up. More springles around. And Viper, he's sitting at 58 gold. Needs to use the market to get any control, to get traps back. And that's why those two traps were so costly for him. Yeah, that's what's been run now. And this right here nearly, like... People don't quite know because it doesn't really get covered in documentaries, but this is elephant mating season right now at this time of year. And we're seeing it with the amount being pushed out. With the increased production speed as well, also being researched right now by Marine Lord, even more going to be getting out in the field. And with the amount of gold and food he's got incoming per minute, he can actually afford to keep throwing them away in a situation the Viper could not. Wow, Marine Lord was lacking upgrades. So many, actually. Look at that in the Blacksmith. Did he? Like, he never did the Castle Age upgrades out of the Blacksmith. Really weird. His elephants could have been even stronger. He didn't want to make it too easy, right? <laughs> also, like right, relatively speaking, it's not a big upgrade for them. No. So it's not, not like something major like for archers, for example. It's pretty big work. I mean, the Force March could be big. Actually, I like the idea of Force March the coming minutes because he could easily catch Viper off guard with a transition. If Viper goes full into archers, I would love to see Marine Lord just pull resources for a mana arms push. Because with Force March, you can actually flood through. Like, Force March is, is pretty broken in the right situations. For those unaware, because we never see it used well, um, it can double the speed of your unit. So, Mana Arms that usually moves at 1.12 movement speed will move at 2 plus movement speed. They move faster than Horseman, and it is scary to watch. <laughs> yeah. Well, kind of uh, with some wings oh, are just sprinting no. through there. Elephants somehow oil. have remarkable resistance to hot boiling oil. That's weird, because I'm pretty sure if you want to cook elephant, all you need is that type of heat. Looks like he's going to back away for the moment, though. He's like, I am not quite a pop cap, so don't need to throw away my troops. But if you give me the trays on the sprills for free, I'll take it. Turns around, overwhelms the small, measly front line of Viper. And these trays, they just feel bad, because Viper is running out of resources. He found some miracle gold out of nowhere that will keep him alive for the moment, but it just does not compare to Marine Lord. But tries to get some control here. Arrow slits doesn't want to commit to... Well, he didn't even have the stone. Go for the Springleton placement. Keep now on quite some problems. Goes for the Springleton placement over here. Spearman count still not that high. And now goes for... What is that upgrade for the Viper? Goes for his Horseman upgrade, apparently. Better yeah. than Horseman. Uh, it's not a bad idea up against Elephants, right? Like, you need something that can gap close ASAP. This is the problem that you have. Like, 
this is the snowball fact of elephants. When you get this many, if you try and send spearmen in and they just start to step back, like half your spearmen are dead before you can gap close. And all of a sudden, phalanx is useless because like, this, if you don't need double the layer. There's not even one layer. Like, look what happens here. This is so stupid. The scholars are left behind for a second, but look how fast your spearmen just die from the disengage. Oh, that's just horrible. And oh now the Springles are getting going. in there again, trying to disengage. Not going to happen. The trap. trap still oh, survives. No, Viper, look at his resource bank right now. These trades, like, even with the keep here to assist him, even with the outpost as well, this really does feel one-sided. Marine Lord, as we said already, can afford to keep losing elephants day and night. It is mating season. He's never running out. And now the villager pool, he says, this is a good area for a keep. You're right, Viper. Let me put one down as well. Oh, but elephant count is shrinking a bit. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, and it's still 9 in the front, 12 on the map. <laughs> and, well, and keep us out production. now. Oh, yeah. Well, he is going for quite some solid numbers. But now he is a bit indecisive, it feels. And elephants are starting to fall. Not yeah, sure about this keep. He's a little bit scared about the, the archer count because it's like very hard to put a den into. Like cost efficiency wise, you're talking about a unit that costs 80 resources versus a thousand resource unit, right? So like trade wise, it's working out well for Viper, but it's keeping him in cast lays. The reason Marino keeps throwing away troops like this is what we highlighted earlier. You don't want to go Imperial, right? And you don't want Viper going Imperial because the Delhi suck in Imperial because they can't get yeah. the tech ups quick enough. So he's forcing a reinvestment every time, which is why we never see Viper with four digits in any resource. Ooh, Macro pretty crazy by the Viper. Yeah, you could make an argument to go up though for Marine Lord, right? He is floating quite some resources. Or maybe add some more archery range. It feels like he's not on par with that production. With all his resources uh. there, he could get quite better numbers. Maybe uh. even a tech switch in some form. That keep is going to fall. Viper holding. I hear what you're saying about Imperial Aid. Actually, I don't hear what you're saying. I can't hear you with the sound of elephants. You could get Imperial <laughs> or you could get a few more elephants. <laughs> And you are Delhi, so you've got to get elephants. And now, because the front line pulled back, like you get an opportunity to start ramming here. You can do some heavy damage if you're fast about it. It's covering the trebuchets that are starting to breach here. Viper taking heavy damage on that keep. Meanwhile, Marine Lords is on fire, trying to keep it alive with the repair force, but the double trebuchet is becoming problematic. And Marine Lord needs to make a choice soon. Do I reinvest in the army? Do I transition? in terms of tech up or unit type. And it looks like he's king one or two horsemen. That may have been a misclick, but I actually like horsemen here. If he pushes hard into horsemen, he'll overwhelm Viper because Viper, he only has these very spin, flimsy lines of spears because they're so ineffective against the elephants. Question, and hear me out. Uh -huh. The spearmen are always dying because they're moving in, moving back against the elephants. What about a ram put here 16 spearmen in and get to close down the distance against the elephants? I have these same thoughts, nearly, and it's why pro players are laughing at both of us. Um, it's, okay. it's so slow. One, it's so slow. Two, the other thing that a lot of players have highlighted that they absolutely hate about the Rams is that you have to click where you're going to un-garrison. You can't just press the button. So, like, in terms of microing and fight, it's actually really cumbersome right now. I would love to see that change because I feel like Rams don't get utilized in the way you just described, and I want to see them utilized that way because they'd be phenomenal. Also, I fear that the elephant might just do... Just melee walk damage away? to the ram. Oh, okay. No, I, I the think it's safe to walk away. Melee damage. <laughs> Cause, <laughs> okay. Cause, yeah. cause the other but that's fine, like, right? Slow, if it walks right? away, your springles can move forward, your traps can move forward. True. You're gaining ground, right? There's only like there's only so far they can run before they each the uh, reach the edge of the world. Really. Oh, big fight here! Spearmen going back, moving forward. If only there was a ram to hide in. Well, I don't think there's enough of them left for a ram in the first place. I mean, you can see the lack of commitment here. He just doesn't want to dive. It is a double keep play right now from Marine Lord. The only upside for Viper is the third sacred site hasn't been capped. Which is interesting because Marine Lord has had access to it. He could have went for it. Instead, he's just fixated upon this location. It just looks like they're trying to summon a, a great demon of corn here for the amount of blood being spilled because nobody's playing for that sacred site win condition. Oh, it's tricky, right? Both players doing a really good job of contesting. Spearman count down to 16 again here for the Viper. And it feels like the amount of arrows is enough to tickle the elephant slowly down. And look at that, no more scholars around. Look at we only gold. have two scholars on the field for Marine Lord? Look what is his, this? Look at his gold. That's why he doesn't have scholars anymore. He's ran out of gold. He's actually mining right now. He's realized it's a problem. But one scholar could get you an extra 150 gold per minute. Like if we check that Northern Sacred site, you may notice a lack of heavy defenses to stop you from capturing it. It's baffling to me that there hasn't been maybe like one elephant going up here to get rid of the outpost, followed by a single scholar to just capture that. 
Elephants losing in some HP. I, I, I think we need to see more scholars. Look at that now. Seven scholars in the queue together with ten horsemen. Raids are going to oh, join baby. the... Oh, that's not a raid. That's, uh, just... <laughs> that's not a raid. That's another sacrifice to corn, I'm afraid. <laughs> that, that, that is... Oh my god. That That's what happens when you get horses drunk on whiskey, I guess. Because I don't understand where the hell they were going. And neither do the riders. The thing is, Viper can't really raid, right? Because all the keeps are protecting the economy. And as we saw earlier, most of the farms are around the town center. It's a pretty good job there. Trap even went down for the Viper. Elephants, oh, a bit out of position. Uh-oh, slip up. Hey, it's just one elephant. We've got plenty of them. It's three down. Ah, it's just three elephants. We've got plenty of them. There's a switch up coming, by the way. There's still 12 elephants in the field, but look what's being built now by Marine Lord. He's going heavy into horsemen. He's going to rush through. And I think his plan is to flank into the Eco Viper. If he hits him there, he can't keep replacing him. And he's already running out of resources, right? Like, wood has been good for a while, but wood is what's been driving Viper's army. And it's slowly running out. And while this is happening, Marine Lord, with plenty in reserve, is going to go for the tech up. And also another keep to try and consolidate forces and create the Magano line to keep Viper at bay. How many keeps does this guy have? Uh, uh, plenty moly. more common. He still has enough for two more, nearly. Actually, no, three wow. more. Because remember, he has compounded defenders. Uh, it oh, feels like he has, like, seven keeps already? Something I mean, like if, that. If we click on a villager, we can literally see how many he's got built already. It's probably, I want to say, six in the field. Oh, may, may, uh, maybe this because is... he lost some at the bottom there, yeah. Let's stop watching okay. this violence. This, this is war crimes. War crimes. <laughs> okay, Viper's now on a timer. He knows that his opponent with... How many scholars does he have? Five scholars. Okay, so in less than 35 minutes, Marie Lot has half of his imp upgrades done. Yeah. So Viper knows if but this game goes to the one and a half hour mark, and he's still in Castle Age, <laughs> it might get tricky against Telly. Well, well, here's the problem though. Marine Lord is trying to push, but he's pushing in the wrong places. So Viper's actually making his way up towards what he needs for Imperial. And he's not losing enough troops. Look at his pop cap right now. He's capped. And he's about to get enough for Imperial. And once he reaches mm -hmm. that, he'll unlock his tech quicker. And that is when you're in trouble if you're the Delhi player. Mm -hmm. Let's oh, push let's it. take a look. Ooh. Elephants, again on the risky side. Just imagine mm -hmm. if that sacred site was capped. I just want you to think about that for a second. Imagine the pressure. Yeah. Imagine oh, the not needing to dive the keep, Nilly. Imagine your opponent needing mm. to come to you. Yeah, well, at the top, at the bottom, we have no defense. The one at the top is not really having the keeps around, so it's it's a bit different. But yeah, at okay, least that one is finally neutralized. He's done it. He's, he's finally done it. He's realized it might be a good idea after he's lost the Southern Sacred Site. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, elephant count still solid. Raids are coming in. Viper okay, now advancing. Obviously can't push that one. Still 80 seconds to go. Never got agriculture. Nani? Oh. Why did what? Okay. And he, he didn't get medical centers either. Why would you not get medical? Like your whole fight has been under a key. Imagine the amount of effective oh, yeah. HP you have of all these guys getting free healthcare. Oh yeah, with those spearmen going in and out all the time, right? Shaking oh, yeah, all yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, it's, I'm just the only thing oh, shaking here instead is my head. I, I just very perplexing. It feels like both players are just being sucked into the vacuum of, of, of aggression that is distracting them from maybe the most optimal of plays here. Small things, small tidbits that can add up and make the difference here. Viper down to 100 gold per minute again. <laughs> Nothing else. The main gold spot not taken. Raid could come in. It's only that one sacred site for the Viper at the top. Nothing else. Uh -oh. Has to use the market. Goes for more farms now. Makes lots of sense. But it will just keep on his trash army. You know how you, like, you're bragging about, like, you're bragging for, for Viper about how he's earned all this money playing Age of Empires? He looks pretty poor when I look at his gold here. And that's a problem because you're teching up and everything you want is locked behind a heavy gold investment for the elite status, right? On top of that, Bombards. Bombards that are now in the field for Marine Lord. And now that Bombards are out in the field, these keeps won't last. Trebs, you can kind of sustain. Bombards, pff, good luck. That gets really ugly. And Viper doesn't really have the tools to snipe those Bombards. Could maybe go for some horsemen again. Has five on the field. More elephant. More tower archers. Never being stop added. building elephants. Are you a true Delhi player if you ever stop pushing elephants? I don't think so. You know what's even better so. than tower elephants? Crossbow tower elephants, which he's now getting the upgrade for. At which stage, much more damage coming out against Viper's forces. That bombard. Take a look. Viper goes for one oh bombard. God, some horsemen. 
He's chasing. He's going deep because one of the keeps went down. So Marine Lord, he doesn't got as much firepower in this area anymore. And he's not forces to go diving into Viper's eco lines. Viper overwhelming the elephants here, forcing them at bay and away. One or two are going to be left behind. Sacrifice to the Viper army, and it looks like too many losses for him. He's going to have to retreat, but a good trade up against the elephants nonetheless. Uh huh, absolutely. Viper has to be happy with that one. Still didn't fight with the imp upgrade. Simply does not have the gold to allow himself to free all the techs. He just oh, simply no. has too little map control. He's a poor boy. He's a very, very poor boy. And his food's gonna have a heavier demand trying to replace those lost villages. Just look at the eco difference. It feels like every time I've been looking up, Marino's always been ahead. And he's always been exploiting that fact to take more resources away from Viper's side as well as the center. Which means the longer this drags out, the worse it gets for Viper. You highlight the gold, but let's consider the wood for a moment. Wood is running out fast. And everything he's doing relies upon wood. God, wood control obviously tricky, but after the game is over, I will have to ask you and Chet how big the gold difference is going to be, how much more Marine Lord will have. It's just going to be so ugly. I mean, it's, just, it's that classic, the rich get richer while the poor get poorer, right? Like that, That's the way you could summarize this game in the gold department, and it just shows you how potent the Delhi can be, why they've always been seen as a ridiculously strong sieve for months now in people's eyes. We don't get to see them as frequently these days, but when they come out, especially when Marine Lord plays him, I said it at the beginning of the game, I think he's the best Delhi player in competitive play right now. Hands down. Sorry, Salah. I mean, sorry anyone else who wants to try and like stake that claim. This guy is remarkable with his early aggression and is proving how he can keep that aggression up even 46 minutes into a game. Viper can at least afford Elite Spearman, which he just finished. So that's really good against the Elephant. That's good against the Horseman Raid. And Viper, if he just built Spearman and Villagers, he can still prevent dying. And then maybe in the long run, set something up like trade. Oh, those elephants, a bit out of position. I mean, are they though? Like, look how much time is wasted wrapping around. Remember, the crossbow upgrades are coming through soon. So these trades are already looking bad enough, but they're about to get worse in the next few minutes. Once that completes, and the whole world, he's been doing this nonstop. Marine Lord is chipping away, denying food equity from Viper. But you know what's more impressive than that is like, although he's focusing on the food, Viper's denying himself the ability to thrive in this game by running out of golden wood. The wood is getting looser here. He used to have like close to a thousand per minute. Now it's down to 500. His gold is at 17 gold per minute. He's on pocket money. He's grounded by his parents right now. And should be happy to be getting a few dollars a week. Oh God. And we see tight bonds on the other side. All the upgrades on the other side there, as we can see. And Viper, he's not really getting onto anything. Obviously we didn't go for the trade wing and this could be one of the last engagements here because Viper, yeah, he has happy with taking this Bombard engagement, trade. but with double keep, I don't think Ooh. he can hold this one. Bombard is getting micro back though. Yeah, it gets away just in time. The oh, keep going up is going to be a problem though. I, I don't see how you dive this anymore as Viper. Viper tries to commit onto the Bombards. The repair crew is there to save the day. The pack step of the elephants and the keep. It's going up, but is there enough villages? The question mark to finish it off. The Bombard, only one on the front line for Viper, will not do the business. The switch around as the recommitment comes out for Marine Lord. The keep's going to go up. The army's in trouble. And after that, Viper, question marks about whether he can replace what is lost. Oh, but look at that. Military wing now being used. So more HP on all our units. Could be Horseman. really handy there for the Spearman. Horseman coming in, tries to dive for the Bombard again, but I don't think they will make it. That was zealously overcommittal, right? Like, just, just go for the archers instead. Take out a few extra archers, like, chip away at this front line. Ignore one Bombard. It's not going to win the game for Viper. It's the archer count staying at this ridiculous clump that is doing it. Remember that Viper, like, he hasn't upgraded these archers yet either. They can get more threatening in the coming minutes. Same for the crossbowmen. And it's remarkable, considering how reliant he has been on them in his formation, that both units are not up at elite. But that's the case here, because Viper, as I said, he ain't got no pocket money. He has zero gold income per minute. The only time he makes any is when he trades for it oh goddy 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 well could we maybe check the house of wisdom and try to find how oh, many upgrades we have we're now going for this gold going to be a tricky one though and we Ugh. see that's a lack of research is a lot of lack a lot of research is lacking right there the resources there it's the gold demand it's, it's all about the gold. <laughs> and Viper, like, this is his best opportunity. He's going to sneak up now into that gold vein. While there's a distraction in the center, Marine Lord, he moved the front line, and Viper's going to try to exploit it to get a second win. And this could be big for him. If he draws all attention here, that's a huge amount of gold back into his pocket in a way that he can thrive here in Imperial. 
that used the market. Now elite horsemen. Viper is happy with playing this. Abyssin, arguably one of the strongest civilizations by only going for units that don't cost gold. Mm -hmm. Exactly, right? Because the composite bows. I, I don't think he got the composite bows just yet, though. It's possible. He hasn't got the elite status for the archers, and he's still pushing a lot of crossbows. I feel like if he had composite, you'd be full on archers by now. But the bigger concern is, like, this is Marine Lord on Castle Age at the end of the day, right? We haven't seen the tech ups come out. They're still researching, but they have to be close now for the Delhi player. And wait, wait, when they I, I, come out, this ain't going to be close. Not even... Okay, it's not elite as well. It's yeah. at least Castle Age. I, for a small second, I thought it was only Fuel Age archers, but elite <laughs> no, horsemen, no, no, no. elite spearmen. <laughs> Yeah, I was really scared for a second. Yeah, Viper but... lacking wood pretty soon. We were talking about gold control the whole time, mm -hmm. but actually oh, yeah. wood is getting really tight as well now. He's been primarily on straggler trees like half the time, and that's why you see him barely getting anything together. And that's big, right? Once the wood is gone, you can't save the bombards for quick repairs, you can't save the keeps, and wood is something that Marine Lord is still not running out of. In fact, Marine Lord has been sneaking around on the bottom side of the map to take away straggler trees while also distracting the backside of the eco Viper. He's been torn three different ways here, forced to commit again towards the defensive keeps of Marine Lord, so bad trades once again. Bombard. Oh, the elephant! Can he get through this? The villagers aren't repairing. They barely have any wood and they're not paying attention. Just in time. Just in time. We'll keep it alive. The oh. elephant will go down. Oh, Spearman actually jumped into the tower there instead of helping out. Whoops. <laughs> oh, Wait. But keep. 600 HP, 100 HP. More horsemen are coming over. We need another shot. Keep. We can see that at the bottom. No, we can't. Elephant's now under some threat. Viper's pushing this one back. Viper making a hold happen here or what? It's 80 military against 55. Bombard cannon is getting. He's going to run out wood. He's going to run out wood. It's going to be tight. Look at the like keep it alive. Another elephant coming in. And this keep is never going down. And by the way, Marino can afford to do this forever. Look at his surplus wood. He has over 7,000 in reserve. And now he's in. He's not being the in. horsemen, they're gone. The front line's gone. These trades are about to get bad for him. He tries to stand his ground. The elephant's going to overwhelm. Horseman reinforcements coming in. He's going to peel back Viper. He was given access to the goal for a moment, but it is fleeting access and it is quickly lost. And when it's lost, he might be as well. His income is about to sink down to zero in the gold department once more. Okay, we have to ask our observer, Lidakor, now scroll the map a bit. Try, let's try to find wood lines for the Viper. There okay, we have one over here. That's the main one that we're using right now. Dropping now to pop 140. Hand cannon near archers. That's a big wood line. That's not really controlled that we have. Viper needs to stabilize at the bottom. How long have we been in Imperial? Because I feel like Marine Lord is about two minutes away from the tech ups in for release. <laughs> like, like, it feels like a very long 10 minutes, right? Like, people forget that those Delhi Elite upgrades, they do take about 10 minutes. And they've got to be coming soon. So. Five minutes plus there. The, the big one is the horseman. The horseman is the one we need to find. Like, if horsemen come through in the next two minutes, Viper's in trouble because he hasn't found the new, like, long lasting wood light. Not that there's much that is lasting long anymore. 15 minutes there for the lead crossbow man. Obviously, will take quite oh, some time. Oh, Army here tries to find something, but I think enough spearmen to deal with this. Yeah, but the problem is, like, he's delaying him on the gold. Like, Marine Lord wants to keep fighting this area. The Scholars, the head patterns are back on the front line because, once again, he has gold reserve to be able to afford Scholars. And a keep going up. A keep that could block his opponent off of the gold line. Treb trying to take it out before it could construct. Heavy damage done there. Just a few villages going down would be good enough. And Marine Lord realizes that it cancels, moves away, has enough stone left for one more keep. Viper looking really good with his military count. Villagers, he needs to make sure to not fall behind too much. But he's pushing back Marine Lord. And that's something we haven't said in 40 minutes. <laughs> Marine Lord kind of pushing back himself. Still not having the tech prioritization coming out. He has these skulls in the field. Build a mosque. Get it quicker. Like, think about how often he didn't have skulls in the front line. He could have had those tech ups by now. They would have been a remarkable buffer for him. Just daisy chain into your, your mosque back at home. Have a double garrison and get them in about six, seven minutes instead of waiting what feels like a goddamn eternity. I feel like we're going to be in game number two by the time he has elite status nearly. Oy, 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 oy. Oh, another Bombard goes down and yeah, he has a lot of gold and villages, villages. Wood, but still needs to wait to replace those Bombards now. And Viper, he gets gold. Look at that. 600 gold He's income gone. per minute. We haven't seen that in 30 minutes. <laughs> It's actually depressing to say that out loud. Marine Lord always in the four digits on income and Viper sinking down to zero multiple times here. Gold has been found, but wood is going to be an issue in the coming minutes for him. He needs to gain more than this ground. He needs to find an initial wood line as that baby pocket is running out fast. Oy, oy, oy. Okay, next steps. Viper, what should he use this gold for? Is it Bombards? He goes for hand cannons. I think something like Elite Archers might have been a better choice in my books. 
yeah, Elite Archers would have paid well with the composite bows. Like, hand cannoneers seem good in theory, but... And, and don't get me wrong, like, you know, if there's one thing elephants... If there's a natural predator for them, it's definitely gunpowder, right? Anything that fires off cannon shots or hand cannoneers, they're gonna do heavy damage, but... At the end of the day, like, Archers, it's more cost-effective. He does have gold for the moment, so I think that's what allows the switch up, is now he's running out of wood. So maybe it's better this way, but I would love to see him prep the gold for some sort of upgrade. My issue is if he wants to go back into Archers, where is this new wood line? Where are you getting it? You haven't switched to trade. You haven't got any other pocket wood lines. And Marine Lord still holds a ridiculous reserve of wood with over 6,000 in the back. Viper, zero wood income right now. One okayish lumber camp there, oh. but that's an unpretty army, and that's why we see hand cannoneers in the queue, as you mentioned earlier, and that's really intense on the gold. Not really what he wants to go for, even squeezed in some men at arms, not the craziest thing. He needs more spearmen, but how without wood? And once these hand cannoneers are gone, you've got nothing, right? Like, how do you replace them quick enough? Because even if you had the gold, which he really doesn't, hand cannoneers are one of the longest production times for an infantry unit. And they die so quickly. Despite their high health, they are static. They are slow moving. The elephants will overwhelm them, as we just saw there. Elephants that are now guarding against a flank attack. And there's the move, Viper! He's yoinking the wood! Marine Lord went aggressive, taking wood everywhere else on the map. And now he might not notice the sneak in. It's going to be an important detail if he has vision. If that keep goes up, he should see it, and he should be able to punish Viper for it instantly. Oh, he Roll doesn't really want to repair. Viper goes down to one wood. Stop wood. there. Oh, yes, go no! The Spruill gets it. Spruill's going to be torched down for its troubles, but worthwhile. And yeah, he does see it. Marine Lord He's about to be a nightmare for Viper. Tries to pull more villagers across, tries to hold a front line. More hand cannons in the field now, up to 12 for Viper. But the elephants are reforming so many of them, the horsemen as well. If they charge in, they can just evaporate this line of hand cannons. Elephants diving in. A start a step back. Viper sacrifices the archers to make the hand cannons last longer. But once they're gone, you're the primary target. There's too many elephants here. Not enough gunshots. The hand cannons are going to go down. And with it, Viper will call GG. Marine Lord establishes dominance and wins to the Delhi before he even sees his elite upgrades. What a crazy game to start this one off. Delhi winning in Imperial Age, something we haven't seen in quite, quite some time. Look at that one. Village account so much better for Marine Lord for so long, but that allowed Viper to go onto his massive army. It's obviously cheaper units. Holy moly, Viper with the bigger numbers, but it didn't matter because Marine Lord kept his army alive. Yeah, that military count graph for Viper is just showing us that he was still alive for all that. Okay, right? don't show it. Don't show it. it don't like show economy. Let's go. go. Chat, we need predictions. What's the difference in gold income? Marine How Lord much God. more gold does Marine Lord have than the Viper? What would you say? I think Marine Lord got 69,000 overall. 69,000 overall? Okay, and what's the difference? Uh, 28,000. Okay. Let's Actually, no, it. it's 30,000. This is going to be 30,000 difference, I think. Oh, it like has it, to be so much. Marine Lord, oh 6624. <laughs> <laughs> I was being generous with the fame. I knew it was going to be high. Like, if you do the maths right, like, five relics, 500 gold per minute. And that was going for over 30 minutes. And then the sacred mm -hmm. side control, which for most of the game, he had at least 300 gold per minute coming from that. And he took away gold veins in the center. Like, this is just ridiculous. Just look at all the numbers. The stone as well. This stone enthusiast because he went for compound of the defenders, something that most players don't do anymore. Marine Lord giving a good argument for it in that game. Viper. Yeah. I, I, I want to give him credit for hanging in that long, but I was struggling to see a way that he was going to breach through. Like, Marine Lord, gold count. he made elephants look gold cheesy, count. right? Like, we, we need to see the KD as well. No, don't switch away oh, if, no, we can, no. if we can. I need to see they, the KD. They want to see your pretty if we face. Can, I'll go for it. I'm sorry, they want but to see But because KD had to be really, really bad as well, right? Uh, yeah, so like he, been he wouldn't have would have been trained well against elephants because elephants are just too much effective HP. <laughs> yep, there you go. And the, the crazy part is Marine Lord was the aggressor, right? Think about the way this game played out. He was the one diving past defenses, into defenses, whatever have you, the whole goddamn time. And yet he still ends up getting almost a 2 KDA. Like, it's just ridiculous. King of the Hill with an unorthodox Delhi pick. Someone that I don't think I've seen since the new King of the Hill got introduced. <sighs> yeah, and the new King of the Hill, simply the square shape. We see the beautiful elephant there with a the guy doing yoga on top. Enjoying his life. Being Until he comes under fire from there. spearmen and archers and oh god. He's not melting. <laughs> not anytime soon. That looks like it's a, a war elephant to me, so even more health. 
And it looks Ooh. like. Ooh. Viper with the early. Is he straggler trees? Mill opening. No, no, he went, no, no, he went no, no. lumber, He's didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Lumber? So that's interesting because okay. last game we saw Marine Lord go straggler trees, right? Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because he wanted a quick attack up. Peculiar that Viper doesn't prioritize the feudal as fast. That can be a little bit dangerous against the English. It gives them a little bit more wiggle room. The curious detail to me is whether Marine Lord will use that wiggle room to go for a fast feudal himself or if this is going to be like one of your extended Dark Age with multiple farms. Well, it seems like the split is one on gold right now for Marine Lord. Now he's at 50 gold. Okay, so he pulled away the villagers there. I'm, I'm really confused. How do you get 50 per minute for Marine Lord? It's two uh, villagers just bugging out a bit. Ah, one just built a house. Yeah, Okay, yeah, that yeah. makes sense. So you because it should be 80 gold day. per minute for two villagers. And yeah, you see the early wheelbarrow, so we're expecting something around like three, four farms by yeah. Marine Lord before he ages up. If I remember correctly, the way that it calculates per minute is it, it checks it every minute. So if your village is only gathering for like half of that, it can change the value, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that sometimes we see like villagers being pulled and the income still stays pretty high. Mm -hmm. Looks like Scout just getting any info. He wants to see if Viper's going to go early aggressive. I expect him to hang around here just to see the first military building coming out from Viper. Gives you kind of a, a gauge of whether you're going to be the defender or the aggressor in this matchup. And Marine Lord, I wonder if he's going to look to just go for like eight farms and boom up fast. It can be a little bit dangerous because there's only one sacred site for Viper to focus on. But it will allow you to rush towards Castle, which I think is really where you want to be as the English in this current meta. Feels like it, right? That was the BCQ approach as well. Mm -hmm. It Viper did bite him in the really... ass, but that was against like <laughs> a Civ that builds a lot of keeps really fast. Like I, I felt like the, it, it's kind of weird actually in that game because the Roos do feel better for that play than the Delhi on here due to the value of the corner landmark, right? Giving him like 300 gold per minute, as well as how quickly mm -hmm. you can grab all those relics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I can see how Roos feels really, really strong. Look at that. Double Deer could have easily taken as well. We oh. talked about the boss quite a bit. And Viper now sending his two scouts home. Wants to deal with the harassment. Feels like Marine Lord wants to be a bit annoying on the gold. Yeah, she wants to try and tilt Viper off it a little bit. Uh, looks like the tech up is underway. As expected, it is going to be the good old Dome of Faith. You do not build the Tower of Victory. It is a lie. Anything that is, says that it's like victory like that. You don't believe it. It's like when you go to a kebab shop and they're called like Ace Kebabs or Great Kebabs. It's probably made with dog. Don't eat it. Um, no. I, I, I'm a, a so, kebab connoisseur. I've been to a lot. I, I, I have a question. What is chicken kebab made of? <laughs> this depends where you order it from. Sometimes it is dog. <laughs> Sometimes it's chicken. Okay. What What is like... Oh, okay, okay, okay. Now, I now it. it sounds like a ripoff, right? I don't want to buy that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now we see the Dome of Faith coming up and we see Council Hall replaced as well for villagers. So wants to compensate a bit for his timing. Viper obviously will be up a bit earlier. Mm -hmm. And he did cancel that, that Council Hall, right? So he slowed down his tech timing. It feels to me like Marine Lord's not going to be that aggressive. He's got four farms. Like he'll probably push five or six longbows. Question mark is whether you go harder than that. Like, Viper's probably going to start pushing Horsemen. It's just a natural choice for the Delhi in most matchups. Hmm. But it should be... I'm a bit surprised that we don't see Villager moving forward and build a tower. Or oh, do we see we see a red dot? Is that one chasing down a Horseman? Or is yeah. it a Villager? He's oh, getting actually, vision. Played, didn't... And okay. Marine Lord has taken heavy damage on his scouts, right? So you can't actually rush out and get the vision. Like, you, you just don't make the outpost play now. I think you maybe build a few Lombowmen and get defensive. And I think your goal, like, your win condition is Quick Castle. And it, mm. it, it feels better on this map because, like, it's one sacred site, right? So Viper's not going to boom into Castle quickly as the Delhi compared to a free sacred site map. Yeah, just moving forward now. That will be the tower. First scholar should be moved out basically when there's like 25 30 seconds left on the upgrade. And yeah, it's still taking a bit longer. Now, horseman production. Marine Lord goes for spearman archer. Should be able to contest this one. First tower won't be intercepted unless the longbowman is getting there really quickly. 
He's going to have to rush fast here. It does take 45 seconds to build these outposts. Should take the Longbowman about 10 seconds to reach that location max from where we last saw him. So he will actually be able to do some damage, but it's low damage. It's a 50 health unit, and if the scouts turn to attack, it will kill him off. The problem is the scouts being heavily damaged by Viper should give him the breathing room, but you can see how paranoid he is. That's going to give time for more Longbowman to arrive, and you might actually be killing yourself off on this high ground as a result of that. The Spearman comes out, Longbow's target in, and now the scouts get the opportunity to go in. Bonus damage coming out. It looks like the village is going to be denied. Pipped at the post. The outpost will not go up for Viper. Oh, but scouts really in danger. Ooh. Longbow men died as well. Spearman still around to attack some. Okay. It's not the worst thing ever, right? Because he killed a lot of that early army. Yeah, and he's killing more. Like, look, 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 this right now on both sides, right? Marine Lord actually feels good about this trade. If we were playing someone like Command and Conquer where units upgrade when they kill enough, that Spearman right now would be wearing gold armor and flashing. Like, he would have killed some people. <laughs> like, he, he killed the... <laughs> The scout, he killed a horseman. Also, he kept rooting and brace and stunning them so they couldn't move away. Like, that is the most Giga Chad Spearman push I've ever seen for one Spearman on his own in the early game. Look at how Marine Lord is going Spearman exclusively. Just a second yep. ago, he had four Spearmen, only one single Longbow Man. Village is now coming forward, and Viper, without an archery range, can't contest that. Is now leading the tower, won't get all the wood <laughs> back. And Marine Lord has the early good army. What up? And wait, was that double horse? Was that double stables? Please tell me that was not double stables. From no, it was God. archery range as oh, well. Oh, thank God. I, I, honestly, I was going to have a heart attack if I saw that. Like, you're a deli man. Have some self-respect. Archery range makes more sense. But you're up against Lombos. You have got double production. But remember, the English Council Hall is a double production building. It's as effective as two archery ranges. means that you do not actually get an advantage in terms of count over the English here. And on such a tight map, where you always basically fight through the center, the extra range is just so good. Yep. Because you're fighting, moving forward, moving back. You already got the tower up in the center. And really good position for Marine Lord now. Mm -hmm. And he's got four people on the stone. Hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's not just Aris Litz. It could actually be a slow TC. Those were the four villagers that built the tower, though. Yes. So I think he might just feel, okay, I wanted to send four to make sure to get the tower up, and now I don't know what to do with them. Okay, let's just go and stop. That, that's not like... That, 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 I, I see like the, the logic behind that, and he's going to get a few additional outposts down, but like also from a like high-level perspective, like the top 10, I always talk about this 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 double hop, right? Like If we're playing checkers and we get one... Un like one kill from move they find two or three they find like and this and that and from Reynolds perspective that's a lot of villages to pull to the center just to build outposts so he could utilize this to go for a tc delayed and it's someone that viper can't address because he's in the meantime getting the static defenses to deny the wing condition for viper okay yeah really nice viper tries to make a counter attack happen though and five horsemen five archers could find some kills if marino is not reacting in time should get a nice heads up though simply because of the vision there look at that marino still not on goal at all so this will be a long feudal age out of him yeah and it's another reason why i think like double tc could make a lot of sense he got enough gold just enough to actually get the piercing upgrade so he's going to do additional damage to the lombos now the rush in Pull back, formation shuffle. Seriously, this makes it so easy to dodge out melee raids to this day. It's kind of ridiculous. Really good move. Really good move by Marine Lord there. And yeah, gets away without a single loss. What a great reaction. Now mining camp is getting killed, but that's not the biggest loss for Marine Lord. No. Like, he doesn't care about the mining camp, right? He will be denied the second racks going up, but just a few mana arms deal with everything that Viper has right now. And while that's happening, look what Marine Lord is doing away from home. Lombo Battalion moving in. They do see the outpost, but if they time this right, they should be able to insta-snipe one or two of the villagers down before Viper can get them garrisoned in a way. But he's reacting. He moves the archer line forward. Spearman going to be baited into a fight. A bad fight for Marine Lord. He comes away from the static defenses without vision, and he gets outnumbered here. And the retreat, it's not a good retreat. Remember, these Lombowmen move slower than the archers, so they will be chased down. That's got the buffed attack oh, speed. Nice move. I, I think nice we maybe need to fight here. Uh, maybe micro a bit could be an option right now. He's Brace. just disengaging. Spearman not finding the kills. Viper with a beautiful engagement felt like he lost one unit and killed like five. But I like the way that Marine Lord minimized losses there. Like, notice he prioritized free Spearman to keep alive so he could brace against the whole charge. If those, mm -hmm. if even one of those additional Spearman goes down, like, there's a rush through. The horseman will dive. So, actually, good hold there. Unfortunate for Marine Lord to lose that many troops, but he still has the high ground, right? He's still denying the win condition for Viper and also the gold trickle he'd need to think about castle realistically. And while that's happening, look at what Marine Lord's doing on the stone. Like, he's up to 229. He's building another outpost, but I think this is going to be like a 14, 15 minute secondary TC. 
Oh, it could be crazy. Look at that. He's getting all the upgrades as well. I wouldn't be surprised if he's just trying to fortify this area. Because Viper? Look at that. He, he's trying to make a feudal age all in happen as well. And then it will be like full feudal against full feudal. And one player still has three towers with that fight. Yeah, it does feel a little bit weird to me that like, he's still not considering the second TC though, because I think he's buffed this away, but like at the end of the day, the English can have some downsides economically. I think from his mindset though, because farms are so good compared to berries which dry up, once the berries are gone, Viper can't keep pushing an equal amount of troops. But this is what I was worried about. Like Viper was going to get into the ram, and all you're doing is investing a lot of resources that encourage ram play further. Look at that funny wood line. On the, on the map where there's oh, endless the amount of wood, wood on the outside. <laughs> yep. Yeah, he, he was simply moving there. I like that though. Like both sides have that. So Viper has one to the north of his TC as well. It's meant to be a safe wood line, right? Because if you think about how far away the wood lines usually are, it opens you up to potential raiding. Oh, Viper moves in now. Big fight upon us. Ram a bit on the late <laughs> side, but Longbow Man having the better range upgrade wise. Look at that. Viper has only one single military upgrade. Why are we getting the second one for Marine Lord? Yeah, Marine Lord trying to get the resistance, range resistance here. Attack speeds line and just take down these archers one by one. They haven't even peppered into the Lombos just yet. Start a step back. Defense is here to hold for the moment. The charge coming through, but in a choke point, beautifully done Marine Lord. He braces, he baits him in, and now he can't get around with the horseman. He's stuck here. He has to engage. Viper trying to take out the Spearman quickly, able to do so with the reigning archers, and the Lombos will just step back for the moment, but the outpost staff still. In the meantime, he'll need to garrison this. He has got enough longbowmen to stay safe inside the outpost. The problem is he needs reinforcements. That is a lot of horsemen. 15 in the field. The ram slowly making its way, its way through the fortified outpost. It is going to take some time, but it looks like Viper has successfully breached the high ground defenses. Oh, really important that he continues to produce units here. Three scholars now getting sniped down by the towers. Nice target fire, but first tower is going down. Not the most important tower, though. Some more raid here, not the most important thing either. And Marinot, he will try to finish this game in Castle Age. Look at that. Took the foot off the gas and is now thinking about upping. I think Viper even leaves some units here and try to go for the attack. Could be an option because he gives some time to Marinot now. He needs to be fast. And this is my concern about what felt like a little bit of an overinvestment for Marine Lord, right? Like, he, he won three outposts. He won them all upgraded. That's a heavy investment. That's fine on its own. But throwing the army away the way he did as well offers up an opportunity now. An opportunity for Viper to march through with rams that he's now built to insta-breach your base. And if you choose to tech up with the greedy choice of going to the King's Pass, that is an easily rammable building. Marine Lord is going to be forced to go for the White Pass, and it's going to feel uncomfortable. Ooh, well, you still allow yourself to get mangonels out pretty quickly, a trap out pretty quickly to get a good foothold of the center area. But yeah, we'll lose another five longbowmen, and soon it's 10 military against 44. Viper should also know, wow, you're not producing, you're not contesting this. I should think about going castle edge myself. Mm -hmm. He has the flexibility to do so. He's also gathering a little bit of stone himself, so he's going to be able to upgrade these outposts and give Marine Lord a taste of his own medicine. Marine Lord comes out, tries to at least snipe out the Scholar before going down, but that is ambitious, my friend. Those are chunky boys, not easy targets. Villager-wise, I'm a bit surprised that Viper is behind by seven, though. Did we see any raids, or did he intentionally idle his town center? One or two villagers died, but this feels like it might have been one or two missing productions like i don't feel like marine lord sniped seven villages worth of value viper would probably sacrifice one villager production for textiles at some point that usually does happen in the delhi as it only takes 20 seconds but yeah that's six villages unaccounted for and we said maybe two got killed on the front line so it does seem like there's some, maybe some gaps in the production horseman trying to wrap around now rams obviously shouldn't really achieve too much maybe well, what are you doing here mr further. ram <laughs> well thanks better of it a little bit ambitious. Viper now goes onto stone. Wants to get the keep up in the center as well. Horseman Mango's now wrapping in from the top. But the enough the I don't think Viper finds too much. Choke point. Choke points are scary right now. Viper can't afford to die past this. He's trying to wrap around to regroup. But look at the hole. The Spearman. The Lombos in the choke point. Minimizing the damage to melee as they can't spread out. And it means he's losing a lot of horses for this. A lot of archers as well. The villagers stand their ground. They arm themselves with the bows. And they force the horsemen away. They will hold. Oh, why did Viper feel like he could achieve anything there? White Tower there, defensive abilities of the English, all the army there. That was a big overstep in Viper. He had a solid 30 military lead. 
Now it's down to not even 20. I, I'm perplexed. Like, I understand you're trying to cover your tech up, but you, why throw it away? You don't need to, because now look what happens. Marine Lord is going to feel confident. The Maganel now comes out. He's rebuilding his forces. He'll hear the tech up, and he'll rush the hill. And right now, Viper does not have enough stone to drop a keep instantly to combat the aggression. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tough maneuvers here. The question, can we get enough relics behind this one even? I'm not even sure if that should be a prioritization of the Viper who is now finishing his Castle Age building. Nice. And didn't really prepare the Scholars next to the relics. And he didn't really prepare himself for these night raids, which are just diving past his central defenses, right? Like, he didn't actually fully layer himself in. He covered the north and south side, but these knights, very chunky, can just rush through the center. The center that is unguarded by Viper. Let's see about that. Only one knight for now on the field, so should die pretty quickly. Viper still generating some gold. And now should think about going for crossbowmen himself. Goes for... Spearman and Archer upgrades. He's now building the keep. Did he buy this for himself or did he put enough villagers onto stone? I think he bought it. Uh, if you look at his stone, it's 90 stone. It hasn't, hasn't really changed that much per minute. Like, yeah, yeah. Okay, there you go. There was a hard call. Wait, is the number lying to us? It's still 90 stone. <laughs> what? I... 90? No, 900. So he bought like 300 stone. Yeah, he, he must have bought some. Like, it makes no sense. Yeah, because he built the market there as well. I think he bought the, the stone and then went on stone for a second keep. I was looking at the numbers like, there's no way. <laughs> like, there's no way that he's gathered 800 stone in less than a minute. So the timer hasn't updated. <laughs> that would be impressive. Okay, let's take a look at the maneuvers now that both players are trying to find. Uh, there is some raid at the top, there is some raid at the bottom. Viper will find the one at the top. The one at the bottom, some Longwars will just try to shoot over the wall or maybe try to get a kill against that Scholar. It's like not the greatest rally control for Viper in this one. It's kind of uh, like Marine Lord's not in position to guard all of them though, right? Like if you look on the north side, that's two relics for free. The Viper's not going to be contested. Then. And Viper now, this is just a distraction force. Like he's throwing away these archers to guarantee two relics return. He needs to buy more time though. Retreating just immediately away, it's going to lead to your scholar being sniped as he returns from the boar on the north side. Ooh, look at that. Even Ooh. picks those longbow men off. Nice one for the Viper for sure. Three relics on the way home. Has to be happy with this one. Another win condition in the unlikely phase or unlikely scenario that the sacred site is getting neutralized and the game is not over in either direction. And there's a reason that Marine Lord highly fixated on that sacred site at the beginning with the outpost is because this is the downside of the English. We saw it once today already. Like it's very oppressive when you go against these sieves that take control of the sacred site before the 20 minute mark because your siege build up is slow. Marine Lord is at least buffered a little bit by having access to a free siege workshop in his white tower. But this is still going to be a slow build-up. He needs like four trebs to instantly like make his way through these defenses. And that takes a lot of time and a lot of resources, especially for someone that is one TC effective. I don't like how Viper is not going for all the wild upgrades. Not really using the upgrades in his keep. Could go for villager production, could go for boiling oil. Mm, a bit confused Monk there as well. Not really putting the relic into his mosque there. And now, which actually took quite some time, the first trap shots. But it's only one trap, right? Like, he needs to get up to three to four because otherwise a repair crew could keep the stream alive. And I wouldn't be surprised. Like, his Viper... Like, we said he's missing a lot of techs. Is he at least going for village fortresses? Like, you've got to be. With this many keeps going off the center, it's such a high-value research. It looks like we have got some coming through, but he's choosing to prioritize boiling oil, so won't even be able to eco-boom in the next five minutes. That being said, oh! four minutes away from victory, and four relics being grabbed up. Two already banked, two more coming in. Viper, I love this. This is the power of the deli. You know what he's doing here. He is putting two relics at the front. Yep. That if we see Marie Lords all in, he actually Wallow. can go for the protection with the big Waller Laws. Mm -hmm. So clever. Yeah, this is something we saw Puppy Paw utilize really well in the series earlier, where he just kind of, he min-maxed the way he approached the site, right? He didn't throw away all his troops. It didn't involve the use of these relics, but it's all this idea of layering, like how do I force you off or how do I slowly trickle in troops? And he's providing himself many means to do that right now. Like all the tools in Viper's arsenal, it's going to be very hard, a big ask for Marine Lord to breach with only two trebuchets in three and a half minutes. Ooh, and if you have that keep set up, so many scholars, but I think it mainly else. comes down to Springles now. 
I think, I think Marinox without a single Springled? What is no, he going no, no. to achieve? Because he wants to die fast. Look at the man arms count. Like his timing might be good. I think he's reading this right. Think about how long oh. Bullet Oil takes. If you just dive in now and torch these down, you won't be punished for it. They're too heavily armored. Remember the armor cloud upgrade for the English, making these boys the chunkiest frontline. Imagine, well, now look at the torch damage coming through. Trebs as well. And because you're aggressing it this way, it means that villagers cannot move into repair. First keep taking heavy damage. A keep going up behind them. Once it does, the attack speed buff is going to come through from Marine Lord. And now look at this. He chases in. He baits him in. Springles exposed. He rushes forward. And Viper needs to be careful. That, that many crossbowmen on the front line. And the gap close. He gets in. He surrounds them. The head pat is trying to keep him alive. Springles still being chased away. Keep on fire. First one to be breached. Marine Lord, two and a half minutes away from, Vic, uh, from loss here. Viper looking like he can still clinch this up. Where's the conversion? Where's the wall of law? He had all the time, just imagine how he's pushing everything away. It just feels like such an easy setup for the Viper, but can't go for it apparently. Doesn't have the macro, doesn't have the mind for it at the moment. The siege, the siege losses here nearly. It's just so easy. These boys are too chunky, and now the Trebs will forward. A keep on the front line. Now another Siege Workshop effective on the front line from Marine Lord. And if you try to build these keeps up with double trebuchet and attack to be buff in play, you will lose it instantly. Ooh, but Viper still with the perfect setup there with the army. One keep goes down, but enough towers, still enough scholars, more coming in. But I think the oh, double wow. keep might be enough. More men at arms will be thrown into keep. it. Viper's economy obviously not that great. Double trip. Look at the damage they're going to do. <laughs> and that's going to have an attack speed buff, friends. So it's going to be pretty damn fast here. Three trips now in the field for Marine Lord. Repair crew keeping his front line alive. Keep goes up. Man at arms count is at 16. Marine Lord has one big divide push left in him, but he's running out of time fast. One and a half minutes away from Viper getting his victory on the scoreboard for this series. Big repair. It's so important to send lots of villagers onto wood now. You really need this one. Springle at the front wants to oh, good luck not really engage there. Oh, crossbow choice was so good for the Viper. The perfect answer to all those men at arms. Mm -hmm. And he didn't have them on the front line before. They were too far away, but now they're in position. Man at arms. Going to try to chase him with the attack speed buffer as well. Skull's going to be in position. The head pat is in effect here. The elephant needs to be targeted out. It's going to be a hard target for them. Treps in the meantime gets through the keep. It's a minute. A minute away, Marine Lord is running out of time. He switches over to Spearman now because Man at Arms are just not pushing fast enough. Oh, oh tricky, tricky move here. It's Scholar still around for the healing. Give me one relic in reserve already. He really would need to see that one being used because Man at Arms now have to run in. Viper can block it off if he wants to. Just consecutive five, four Volalos and he wins the game. The mango, the mango could be big here against the trebuchets. Remember, it's got buff damage, so two shots will take them out. Instead, he focus fires on the scholars. Spearman chase in. Man at arms as well. He needs to get a tick of this, or it's gonna keep ticking down. 20 seconds away. Viper with the scholars alone can tank this. It's looking futile for Marine Lord. The villager pool, they arm themselves. Five damage per shot, but it's five damage too little. An attack speed too little too late. Viper will hold. He will get a point on the board, and it is gonna be our 1-1 one, one scoreline as we move past game two. Ooh, Viper gets enough HP there. And those two elephants holding out as well. What a crazy defense there. Double keep, four towers, sprinkled straps. Viper had exactly the right answers there for the defense. And Marine Lord, like, I, I like the idea behind the, the villager pool, but far too late. But credit to Viper, like this was very strategic. He understood the layering. Marine Lord had an idea around those oak posts. I would bring the focus back to that play by Marine Lord with the triple outpost and the investment he made there. That stunted a lot of other options. I understand the prioritization on that as a pressure point, but there was no... There was no backbone behind it afterwards, right? Like, I think I like that play if he pulls the army back. Because if he pulls the army back, that's 20 additional military forces in that final fight. And I think that's enough mm -hmm. that maybe you clean that site. But that's I'm not going to take anything away from Viper. Like, he was very calculated, very methodical about his timings. And when he took control of that sacred site, he made damn sure he was never going to lose it. here on Mongolian Heights. Pretty standard to open two scouts simply because it is the map with the most sheep out there. And the big question mark, how heavily are we going on to wood? Who is opening with a dog? 
Yeah, right now, Marine Lord looks like he's actually sacrificed some of his... Let's like, say so he's not in a situation to maybe go straight for it. Viper is still holding the 200, so he could rush out if he wants. Um, damn, I mean, it feels good, right? Look at that shop art. My donut shop is never running out. I mean, donation for the donuts, right? It's just it's so easy to find sheep here. Usually, the strategic players, you build a second scout, and then you head to the river, and then go up and down, right, with each scout. So, like, you essentially grab the vast majority of sheep straight away. And... Sorry, that's can you explain most, this to me right now? That's the biggest balls of a sheep I've ever seen. <laughs> he's just like, he's just like, yo, bro, I bet you can't touch that wolf without getting your head bitten off. Bro, watch this. And he's just looking across at his friend hiding behind the deer on the other side. Look at that cow. He's like, bro, see? No reaction. They only eat players. Nice. Nice. And that sheep is so impressed and tries to go over there <laughs> and turn. tries to hear the story again. <laughs> <laughs> just watch him instantly get attacked. I just love I love how like wildlife in Age of Empires has reached a stage where they've gone to like a conference. Like there's been a call. They used to feud, uh, feud amongst themselves and they got together and they went, bro, we gotta stop killing each other. It's like, why? You taste so good. Yeah, but like these humans are already killing us, right? Life is already hard enough without us doing the work for them. Seems reasonable. And and now there's the sheep telling the story. By the way, uh, let's take a look at that scout, please, because they're, they're close to the town. Center. Okay, okay. And now the sheep is telling the story like, oh, guys, you don't know what happened. And one sheep is already getting annoyed because it's so like, and now the sheep is bragging like, oh, I got so close to the wolf. And the others, what? We can't believe it. <laughs> and they and all the try to go one, do it. it really and all of happened. a sudden they're being mind controlled by a scout. They're like, where are we going? I don't know. But this guy's really charismatic. Let's follow him. Two minutes later, they've been clubbed over the head with a crook. Yeah, that seems about right. Kill sheep, man. I mean, aren't we all just sheep deep down? Like, you know, right now, if one of us has said, let's get some poggers in the chat, how many people are going to type up, right? No one. They're all independent individuals. No one would follow your random ideas. <laughs> That's true. No I don't have many no random one ideas. <laughs> Well, looks like for the moment, a lot of food being gathered. It's Marine Lord. Like, this is something beautiful you can do to change. Remember, supervision gives you a 20% additional gathering on the drop offs in that building. And it means you should be able to unlock feudal a lot quicker than Viper. Looks like Barbican next to the shoreline. If Viper scouted this, he could pull villagers against this. If you pull five villagers, you deny the Barbican. Mm -hmm. Is he going to be quick enough, though? Because it looks like a scout's going to spot it, but. Your villagers aren't yeah, in position. No wheelbarrow. This late. is too late. Yeah, 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 I think so as well. Okay, so we'll be longbow man opening without wheelbarrow and a really early opening. So relatively aggressive. Goes for the second town center here as well as the English uh, player. Is no one really going TC, for water. Or is this is this second TC or is this just iris slits? Like, this, this seems like a dock opening to me from Viper. That's the only reason you'd rush council hall like this. Okay, opening is is that going to work? What going going docks? Are you build galleys? Galleys are like the best tier two unit behind hulks now. Okay. The barbican's annoying, but like it's all about securing the fish, right? Um, but it's so easy for your opponent to just punish it with the tower, right? I think if you go dock, most of the time you rather want to go for in dark edge because the opponent goes up with clock tower anyways, mm. and once he gets like one sprinkled out, all your fish is gone. Yeah. So your timing where you actually can lose a uh, use your water is very minimal. Well, the, the problem though is just a few longbowmen can sneak around the north or south side and snipe you trying to build outposts, and you will have good vision in that area, right? So like, it, it shouldn't be that easy for Marine Lord to shut him out on both north and south side. And considering like the amount that Viper is gathering on the stone at this point, it, it's still a coin flip on which he's going to play towards. Like I could still see a world in which he goes docks, but. Now, when he pushes it up to five people, yeah, we're just going to get a very static defensive TC play out of Viper. Hmm. And Marino won't be unhappy with that. Wow. Not even a single longbowman pushed either by Viper. So not even trying to like punish any potential planned docks. Marino might identify this with his scouts and then move out for a dock placement. Hmm. I also think, I actually think a, a bold statement ahead of us. I don't think we will see a single fishing ship this game. Hmm. It's it's possible like it plays out that way, but there's a lot of value defensively, right? Because once you get into Castle Age, like you've got War Junks, you've got uh, your hands like on Hulks as well. Like they're very good at holding those outer choke points. Another thing to consider here is like 
fish, like, I, I actually am a big fan of pulling three, four, maybe even five villages to the, to the dock line to build the docks and then build outposts up. The reason is because when you gather from shoreline fish, it's actually faster than anything else for a villager. Like, a boar is 0.9 food a second, but a shoreline fish, anyone in the chat want to take a guess what it is? It's absurd. It's it's one food per second. Okay. Pretty, pretty massive for sure. But you only have 500 food as well. And you'd sometimes build over it. You have some walking time. Mm. It sounds crazy for sure. But I, I simply think people aren't investing. And oh, look at that. Heavily on stone now. Is that 3 TC play? I think Marine Lord's back in game one. He's like, I can just build keeps and they can build village. No, no, wait, that's a deli. This doesn't work anymore. But yeah, that's going to be that's gonna be a 3 TC boom, which is going to put him at effectively 4 TCs. Good luck. Although it might just be the second TC, like massive pull and just build the next TC. He's with got all those surplus villages. wood, though. Look, look at his wood gathering still. Okay. Well, that indicates 3 TC. Actually, I think he's pulling off wood now. So, I mean, yeah, this it's definitely at least 2 TCs. But we have to remember he hasn't got Song Dynasty yet, right? It would be very weird to go 3 TCs without Song Dynasty. Usually, you want either Song Dynasty and 2 TCs or the like, second TC, then Song Dynasty. But you don't boom 3 TCs before you unlock Song. Okay. Yeah. So... Goes for 2TC now. Now we have to take a look where are the villagers going stone-wise. Still not a single dock on the field. And both players apparently pretty happy to play the long game. Uh, will be big, big question mark. Who feels like they are in the better spot? Indeed, two town centers without song. So villager count should be relatively even here. I won't stay that way for long though. Because Marine Law, you can see he's got the gold already. He just needs to sort his food. And then he's going to be zooming and booming. It's very hard to actually get into a TC rush against the Chinese and come out ahead. How many? We have one longbow man out the, on the field. Now some walls around this area. And whew, this is the moment where we should start thinking about how long could this game last. Also, with the scenario that both are walling. That means we have a pretty fair split 3-3, relic-wise. Mm -hmm. Maybe let's take a look. Did gold spawn equally? Something we rarely take a look at. Could there be another 4k gold mine? It's gotten a lot better, but it looks Marino? like they should be even here. Three. Yeah, it's five on each side. Okay. Well, then that's even. Sacred side even. Relic count even. Woodline four or three big ones. It's pretty reasonable. Three small ones. There's maybe it slightly. Feels like it's more honestly like patchwork. close to perfect split. Yeah, Marine Lord maybe got a, a little bit more stealth for us on one extra patchwork of wood, but like that's a really inconsequential detail in the grand scheme of things. Like everything else is good. Mm -hmm. I think stone is also balanced on both sides, so this this is pretty reasonable. Uh, one thing to keep in mind though. This is another reason why I do like the dock play, is if you build a dock, you can sneak past these palisade defenses and yoink someone's relics. And it's something we've I've seen mm -hmm. a lot of players utilize in the pub games recently, because you're guaranteed to find value, right? There's six relics on the map, and if you beat your opponent to the punchline, which you can do as the Chinese with your supervise, then you can actually end up with the vast majority of relics. Easy peasy. Yeah. The thing is, English doesn't really need it, right? The Yoink from the relics mainly to take them away from the Chinese player. Yeah, but the Chinese need it, right? Like that. So it's yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. I, I get where you come from. Like you're not getting the double benefit, but like if your warriors is going to go hyper late, like taxes can sustain you a little bit. But in this matchup, as you just highlighted, like the English outdo you on the gold due to enclosures. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty crazy. Viper now the third town center being placed down, only went for two longbow men, no rush for relics, so it all comes down to glitches, basically. Although scouts won't have the greatest field trip. No, I back away here. Oh! That's why. Lots of balls in the air. <laughs> mm. Show some respect, man. Those boys are armed. Okay, oh. Double yeah, he's... blacksmith play? No, no one no, barracks, no, one racks, blacksmith. Racks. Okay. He's prepping castle age into pass guard push. Really strong actually on this map. I, I really like it because your opponent doesn't have great control on the choke points. In fact, if you look at the center one, yep, now he's coming in. Viper's like, oh no, no, and also preps the dock. So there it is. He's going to beat his opponent to the punchline. How much value is he going to get out of this though? Because the Hulk could be big. We're going to need a little bit of time, and he needs a lot of gold to get there. Sir? Oh, like sir? sir. <laughs> that wolf? That's okay. You only lost half you? his face. Okay, two longbow men. You can. Transport both of them over. 
Maybe, uh, but that's a bad spot to transition. No, it's fine. Because, it, it, like... Uh, but you can't yoink a relic there. No, no, no. But, like, he's going to get the Lombos in and sneak into the base. I think that's the bigger plan here. Yeah, okay, see? Okay. So, it brings two Lombos across. It's kind of weird because, like, he could have maybe just walked across the crossing to the north side. Actually, I think they did get walled in in the end. It's always hard to see, but make no mistake, folks. Like, the north and south side have been walled by both players. It's just blue is a big, fat bait when you look at rivers. This is, this is so good for Viper that he sent the two longbow men over. Now scouts are coming in. Let's see how deep he dives. Wants to get some intel. Sees a palace guard. How many upgrades does he see on them? Probably not a single one. Yeah, these longbows are going to try to move in, but there's not going to be enough damage out in these villages before they die. One palace guard can just clap them down. Even there should back be two low ones, right? Oh. I mean, the, 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 the palace guard. The, the palace guard are getting blocked by the scouts. The scouts are actually a problem right now. They're, they're actually getting in the way of you killing longbows fast enough. <laughs> Maybe one more hit. <laughs> wow, yeah, yeah, oh, he didn't micro. He turned around to fight instead of just chasing to keep them distracted. But it looks like that villager will go down as a result. It, it just felt like you could have maybe saved the villager's life if you got the scouts out of the way. Uh, seems like the scout. Might what a not. hero. Viper doesn't commit. Not today. Oh, he rolled back. Trust me, I've played enough against Viper. I, I can guarantee you that something is coming to to kill that one. <laughs> yeah. he's in <laughs> say that? Now. Why would you be so mean? The knight, he's coming in. He's charging in. He's that two tap, and he'll be able to find it on the straggler behind. Follow up strike now coming in. So one villager will be going down here. Oh, he might find more. Second. Ooh. Yep. Now, a little bit annoying. Hand cannon slit upgrade. Like, it does mean you take substantial damage even on heavily armored units. Looks like that and might now, be the saving grace. Now, the knight pulls them away, and the scout will come in. Uh, yeah, no, another knight's we'll, coming. We'll find a kill. Another, another knight's knight, coming okay. as well. I, I love this transport play, by the way. This, this is. Like, transport ships have been underutilized for a very long time. I actually think this is like the S tier map to use them on, and you're seeing exactly why. Because players always wall the crossings, and it's your only way to easily get through. Okay. What other map in the map pool do you think could be a good map to use transports on? Uh, I, I find it's, it's not bad on, like, Warring <laughs> Islands, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> sorry, sorry, uh, are you man, expecting, like, kind of a a map pool, less okay. dumb answer out of me? <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't recommend it on Nagari, guys. Really wouldn't what recommend it. Oh, he's going in. He's committing now. So this is going to start to sting uh, a little bit, but Marine Lord, like... He can just go to third TC and offset this entirely. Viper's five villagers, five, killed five villagers. Mm -hmm. Really nice pick off. Annoyance plus scouting. It's because of the lack of docks. Like, like he, he hasn't outpost, he hasn't blocked it at all. Like, Viper's getting all this for free. And surely, like, Marine Lord should have known from the first raid this is happening. There's no way that you saw knights arrive and you go, oh, how did he get across? Like, I have all three crossings walled. Like, he clearly has a dock, but now you're going to be behind and playing in towards that. And it might make you want to get a uh, Springwood out just to try and deal with any sort of defensive ships that might be on the waterfront. By the way, yes, we're seeing two fishing ships, Chad. You don't have to tell me. Neely was wrong. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't a quick play of docks. It was very delayed. But it, it just makes sense. Like, it's just additional resources, right? And if this is going to go late game, like, that's additional resources you're taking away from your opponent. It's also a way of booming up quicker because you have to remember that docks are kind of like mini TCs, right? They're the outside of a town center or if you're playing Delhi with village fortresses, they're the only way you can get um, like resource generators that early in the game. Mm -hmm. Now collecting relics here is Mr. Viper. Marino's getting one home as well. And yeah, those fishing ships not really being used right now. Could make an argument for adding... Oh, look at that. Actually goes for the demo. Instead of the hug. Huh. For what, though? Oh, is is hoping... he hoping Marine Lord is, like, going to get out for a toilet break in the middle of this game and not notice a demo um, ship going towards him? I think he will send a fishing ship to the bait. Look at that. Sends the fishing ship uh, for the bait. <laughs> was, was, was he baiting or was he baited? He's baiting. I, I think he's been baited. Uh, this Look is going to be tight. The demo ship. Demo, 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 demo. Marine Lord! Be ah! It's fine. Nothing happened! <laughs> One hey, got scratched! Hey. Oh, whoa, whoa, nothing happened! That guy lost both his arms and legs! But yeah, he's, he's actually he's pretty cool. He's, he's, he's fine. We'll just shake it off. <laughs> but apparently, life is still worth living here. 
He tactical goes to the front. Demo ships. I, mi I, I miss tactical demo ships so much. Like, please, can we? <laughs> I actually can't believe it. I actually miss demo ships. Like, they, they're so bad now. They are one of the worst units in the game. It's so depressing to watch. Uh, by the way, as I said, we won't see any fishing ships on this map now. Yep, yep. <laughs> I don't think we're going to see any more demo ships either. <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe along the way and then later on. Outpost now to get some more vision. Villager wise, Viper, the five villagers ahead that he killed earlier. And first gold is running out. Obviously, not that important if we actually micro those builds. And well, eventually we'll come down to rush to Imperial Age. And it seems like Viper has the advantage there. It's kind of dece deceitful, though, because you have to remember, like, both sides have certain economical benefits, right? Like, you got supervised, gives you an additional 20%, so although they seem very close to village account, that can actually bolster. Viper, the only thing he can accrue additional resources on is his gathering from farms, right? So if food's the only thing he's got covered, it could be a case of, like, Gold is going to be a bit too slow for Viper, and Fu's going to be a bit too slow for Marine Lord. As you can see, like he's actually trying to weave his way away from having to hard commit into farms and playing off of these deer sites to get him there. What landmark is Viper going for? It feels like Wingard Army yeah, could maybe. make lots of sense. I, honestly, like I, I think the Barkshire Pass, like you're barking bad if you go for it here. It just doesn't make sense uh, up against trebuchets. Sacred Sight. Oh, wasn't captured. <laughs> whop, 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 uh, the best whop. part is he dies just off of the Sacred Sight as well. Like, you know, do I get points for trying? No, you don't. Get out of my face. So close. Winged Palace flying in now. So it makes lots of sense. Such a cheap investment for such a good army. And you know that this game is going to be really long. So feels like a very reasonable investment. Yeah. Wingard Palace appropriately named, unlike Tower of Victory. It tends to do. PCQ in the chat saying English wins late always. Okay. Not everyone would agree with you there. Checks win rates. Ah, clearly they're just not getting there. I mean, it, it's, it can be powerful. Like, I'm not going to deny that. The issue, like, we highlight this on King of the Hill. Actually, the issue for the English isn't the necessarily weak in the late game department. It's the scalability. Like, getting your army in top cap maxed is the difficulty. It's so slow, and it leaves you vulnerable to a lot of other civs. And that's why this timing is important. Like, look at the count right now. Viper isn't there yet. The pushing's coming. Marine Lord is looking to strike while the iron's hot before Viper actually bolsters himself with the network of castles upgrades as well as having max pop cap and this is the problem this is where is it a weakness the siege department the nest of bees heavy damage to be done here it's going to force him away he loses his sprinkles it doesn't get anything in the trade splash damage coming out he can't engage so this is bad for him he's trying to get the keep up nest of bees are at least prioritizing fire under the crossbows under longbowmen but the villagers get forced away he hasn't committed to the keep another wrapper on the backstab around the side viper in a little bit of trouble has to recommit nest of bees they could change targets here if they take out the villagers and massacre them here there's going to be no keep defense in this area Area, but instead, Marine Lord focuses fire onto the Rage Battalion and allows the keep to go up. And Village is now here to punish the Nest of Bees. One down already. Village is not committing. I think could have found a second kill as well. And Viper is him. He has all the tools. Just can go onto army. And yeah, quite some unnecessary losses that are putting him a bit behind his plans. But still, should be fine. But yeah, as Lidak was po uh, pointing out, enclosures and upgrade we absolutely need together with tight barns, two upgrades that really set us up for the late game. Sir, can you please, please fix this? Like, come on, enclosures. just like, you've got how many people on food at this point? I I'd say 30 at least, like, it's worth it. Just get it, just click that button. Just click it. Oh. It's so good. I'm not going for it. I promise Try to upgrade this traps a bit more. <laughs> well, let's hope so. And now trap defense is what he wants to go for. Tight barns, obviously something we really need to see as well with the three relics generating extra food, wood, and stone there. Uh, Siege army looks pretty nice. Oh. Springled count up to six. And Marino's done smeagling, so he's now making his way up. He's got the resources to go Imperial. This is where this gets scary. This is the power spike we talked about with the Chinese. The first five minutes Imperial. He is playing from behind the Imperial Age of Viper, but it's still a big power spike. And I, you know, I think the problem here is like everything got delayed when he didn't use the Nest of Bees to take out the villagers. I'm quite surprised Marine Lord didn't because there was a hard commitment out of Viper. If that keep doesn't go up, he's still diving into his opponent's base at this point. 
Mm -hmm. But I think Viper only took that fight out there to buy himself time to go for the keep. Otherwise, he would have disengaged, maybe waited for one, two more of his Springles and could have taken a better fight. While well, we see Marine Lord reaching Imperial Age with quite some gold in the bank and still a bit of a foothold on Viper's side. Yeah, it's just saying me like shinies. <laughs> Well, because he wants even more shinies to go for the double sacred side control. Nice play here, actually, because Viper's stuck in the center, so it'll be hard for him to go decap on the north side, especially if you set up one or two static defenses. Nesta B is being frustrated in the meantime. Viper, his own frustration is starting to emerge as he builds into the trebuchets and is also getting the shattering projectiles. It will start to become a nuisance for the Spearmans, but Marine Lord, at the most delicate phase of the game right now, it's the farmland transition in mass. In the next two minutes, he will be booming and online, and that's when the aggression will really start to ramp up. Viper's still missing some crucial upgrades. As you can see, only now we are upgrading our men at arms from Dark Age Fuel Age. Finally, we see enclosures on the way, though, so that's the important upgrade that we feel could be the late game winning condition generating gold from our farms. Woof! Sprinkles, nice. stand the ground. Hand cannon is now coming out for Viper. Nest to be splash would be decent if he actually hit the large quantity of hand cannon is. I love this one man at arms. He's the most ambitious lad I've ever seen. <laughs> That's that moment where you're like, charge! And you run across the battlefield, look behind you, and everyone's just standing there, like, we ain't following you. Uh, That's the beast. Need to be careful. Hand cannon is. Uh oh, that's not respect being given right there. Let's be careful. Wheels it back just in time. The extra HP coming in clutch to keep the nest of bees alive. Okay, trap defense looks pretty solid for the Viper. And feels like Bomber Drought is what Marine Lord is going for, while Viper, just infantry and traps, feels exactly like the Wingard army that he's generating. Mm -hmm. As expected, Ryan. This is another part of that slow build-up we talked about. Like, if you rush Imperial, it feels even slower because you want to get the efficient play of going for the Wingard Palace units, right? They're so cheap. It's 400 resources and you get over 1,000 resources of value. Like, it, it's... It's actually absurd. If it wasn't for the 1 minute 15 second timer, everyone would be screaming nerf, please. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pretty, pretty nice army there. You, you can just constantly queue it up. No problem there at all. And... Well, Viper goes for more hand cannoneers than you would expect from most, pe most people. He likes hand cannoneers. He's been doing it ever since Maganel first got changed. Obviously, it's a little bit more lethal now as it got buffed back to like a, a reasonable status. But it's interesting because he's up against Nesta Bees, right? I think that, that's the detail to get well, into. Oh, runs into ground attack. Uh, uh, sir. I mean, it's pretty cool, actually, because if you try and just march up, the shattering projectiles might just smash you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can't really pass in there. Higher range. And if you step in there, big problem for you. The thing is, though, Marine Lord is working towards his ideal army composition, while Viper's army won't get better from here. I feel like he can slowly fold more hand cannon is. Like, the, the problem right now for Marine Lord is he's relying very heavily on bombards. If they ever get sniped out, like, Dunzo, right? So if Viper wants to address that, maybe Horseman could be a good pivot. Horseman is something you definitely can afford as the English. You have plenty of food in reserve due to how efficient your farms are. And it could easily catch Marine Lord off guard. Viper's going for tight barns. Not sure if Marine Lord has it. More resource generation, some stone rewalls, doesn't want to get landed. And tight barns now from Marine Lord as well. Game is still pretty damn stable. And ooh, could be a really long one. And as we said, probably till the one hour mark. Should be better for Marine Lord after that. Should be way better for the Viper. Yeah, once you exploit your resources to the maximum on both sides, like that's where it gets pretty scary for Marine Lord. Because one important detail to consider is like, what do hand cannons cost? Food and gold. What mm -hmm. do you get a lot of as English in the late game? <laughs> Food and gold. There we go. And what does Viper like building? Like, honestly, he's the biggest gun enthusiast I've ever seen in Europe. It's ridiculous how often this man goes into gunpowder units. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just loves to have them in the back there. Villagers a bit on the idle side. Wanted to block off the reboom. And is there an option to go for trade? In this game as well, markets are okay-ish. Like, you can get some distance there. It tends to be risky because they're on the front line. I've seen a few players do it, but it, it's almost always getting sniped out because of bombards on each side, right? So very dangerous play. Not unless we're a minute plus. I don't see it happening. Oh, Viper may be overstepping. Bombards are now coming in. Trap's trying to make something happen, but oh no, going back. Do you think Viper should go for Springles? Or do you think Jenny Springles are just way too good? 
it, it's very hard to get good trades. Like, you have attack speed, but they have health. So if they just keep weaving in and out of range, like, you just get better trades. You can see the effect of it here. Like, they just don't care. They're shrugging off all this Ira fire. Of course, you have good missile resistance, but the extra 50% HP makes it not even close. The hand cannon is too slow to gap close. The baby cannons versus the big boy cannons here. And I think big boy cannons are winning. Spreal, they're going to get a second one for their troubles, but the hand cannon is getting a little bit too deep now. Going to start being punished. The Bombards, in the meantime, dealing with the chunky frontline mad arms. And this trade is not looking that great for Viper because at the end of the day, Marine Lord is keeping practically all of his siege alive. Okay. I think one of the major mistakes in late game RTS that people are doing is having too many villagers. And I actually think 136 on each side is too much because you will now see both both players getting to ridiculous banks which you ideally want to avoid so it actually the player that has a hundred villagers and can actually make something happen is in the better spot if it's totally stalemate obviously then you want to get into high villager numbers but if you have still chances to continue fighting then that's a big thing unless obviously chat is pointing it out you are trying to build a wonder yeah, I was about to say, so, so I, I, if I understand this correctly, Nilly, uh, get 200 villagers, build a wonder, delete 100 of them. Got it. Thank you for the input. Right. Oh. In all seriousness, though, I can kind of see where it comes from, from this map perspective more than anything. Like, I actually like the overboom of villagers on maps like Dry Arabia because of the neutral resources, right? But this is, this like, where are the neutral resources on this map? <laughs> can you point them out to me? <laughs> like, fish. Fish. It's fish. the only neutral it's just the, resource. literally just the fish. <laughs> Chase it. But here's the other awkward detail. Like, Marine Lord, he's just eventually getting the full range here. And now the Grenny boys on the front line. Sending the Hail Marys into the face of Viper. Lombo count isn't going to hold against this for long. You can just see they are not going to stand up well against the Bombards. Man, arm count is shrinking as well. Grenadiers, a little wee bit of a throwaway, but just more space for the Bombards at the back to clean up. Oof. And we don't see any dogs because obviously both players have enough siege to instantly kill all dogs and kill all ships that are coming in unless you send like six plus demos to really try to make something happen. And this is very stalemate. I will now constantly take a look at are we getting to the resources for one day? 3k of each resort. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's looking dicey on both sides. One trying to get the gold together, can never can. The other side struggling on the wood. Six? What? What? what six k of each resource? Yes. That got increased, right? Yep. It got oh. increased because it was too easy. Ooh. Can't let them have it that easy. Like they want to gather this much resource, you got to make them pay a real price. I mean, how these grenadiers? I mean, it's so frustrating. The man at arms line is just evaporated, and then the lombos. Well, you feel like you're getting good trades until you take a cannibal to the face. That's that's when you know things are going bad. That's the beast as well. I mean, this is. Like, Viper is slowly losing a little bit of ground here. Sharon Projectiles, big damage there, though. The trap hits. Viper, even it up and making it a worthwhile trade. Oh, Sprinkle Count now down to only one. Might be completely reset. Tries Ooh. to go in for the repair. Wait, wait, those villagers aren't time. repairing anything. Where are they going? Look at that. Ten traps? <laughs> what is happening? Where are these villagers going? It's like, we're out of here. Good talking to you. Oh, God, we're in the front line. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's a fight going on here, sir. Great. If Grenies get in, they can just instant torch down multiple trebs here, though. Like, you, I think you just run them past and then you just hit the trebs. Well, Viper might be the one to actually ground attack into the direct line. Plus, enough longbows are out. Bombard trying to microwave. Oh, he used really Some early there. there. Not much value gain. Line formation for Viper pushing forward. Needs to be careful. He's going to lose the aura soon. Nesta B oh, splash. Oh. Heavy damage into the center of the formation. Hits the man at arms running through as well. The Bombards, are they just going to plow it? They're just driving in. They just want to get the shots out under the trap, but quick micro away. Viper won't give it over for free and instead will stand his ground with the Lombos looking to trade out the Bombards now. Sharon projectiles. Here they come. Trap. Heavy fire. Big body. Dodge. Dodge. I tell you, man, like late game tribes from English. Oh. They're wild. I mean, they look like they must have firing some spicy meatballs. I'll put it like that. I mean, they are actually scary.
Viper now switching into Horseman. Look at that. Biology on the way as well. Yeah, so he knows, okay, I know exactly what unit I want to go for to snipe that seed shot. Reload. Kind of, yeah, it's, it's kind of one of those awkward situations where maybe you wish you could take back the Grenadiers so you could move fast with your, your Palace Guard boys. But you can't take back Regret. Oh, this might be Regret from Viper. And he's clustering them together. Shots go out. Remember, they're home seeking grenades here. But it's not enough to take him out. Not enough damage. He's even going to turn around. He's like, wait, is that all? Is that all? Run him over, boys. Okay, that doesn't work in this game. I wish it did, though. <laughs> Oh, and splash damage obviously doesn't really work that crazy simply because the distance between the traps is so big. Some more control here at the bottom. And it feels like Marilot can open more angles, but it also feels like Viper has enough answers. I mean, Viper, like, it's the slow, steady crawl. Like, this is what the English want. The best way you can combat English in this situation is, like, you force them to hard invest and lose their army. Because when they replenish, the that's when they're vulnerable. But right now, the only one looking vulnerable is Marine Lord. The gap is open. Viper flooding in on top of the nest of bees. Enough horsemen here to torch for a few. The cannons are going to try to snipe them down. Barely any remaining. Looks like they will keep alive. Marine Lord, though, once again, unable to gain ground due to the longbows and trebuchets holding him in this choke point. Oh, I think we need to spread formation there. What was that? Like 13 horsemen coming in, only finding one single nest of beasts. That was it. Viper obviously going Miles to gone. generate oh. lots of stone and gold for himself. Great I think Viper? One big? Great it is. Just take out the Lombo. There we go. They change the target now. I mean, they're doing some damage, actually. They're finally going to be acknowledged. Their existence has been processed, and now they'll be eliminated. The wild nice horseman by the Viper. Does he want to raid? Well, speaking of raids, like, Marino is finding good chip damage on the flanks here. Like, he's still in the back. I've got to give him credit with the Palace Guard. Like, this is getting frustrating, especially if you hit those farms, because you're not only shutting down gold income, uh, food income, rather, for Viper, you're also shutting down the gold, right? Let's take a look here. Yeah, Marino is running uh, out of things he's willing to throw away. Like, when you switch into Spearman, you're like, I just need the cheapest crap possible. It might gain him some ground as well. It's given time for the Grannies to throw out their shots, and they're doing reasonable damage up against the man in arms. But you, you just feel like when you watch Grenadiers in these type of situations, it really is a bait. And I never like to see them up against Lombos. Like, they, they suck. They really yeah. suck. Two things we have to mention. Look at the gold and stone of Marine Lord. He's thinking about a wonder. Plus, look at the minimap. He has some dots in the bottom corner. So not unlikely that he's trying to set up markets now. Let's see if he actually does hot into that i mean it, he is getting to a point where he could do trade successfully without any vulnerability and i know viper like he is a fan of doing it on mongolian heights mongolian heights is looking like a rule point for him as he chases in the horseman they get on top this time grenadier shots coming out but it looks like two bombards should be going down and lombos will then trade out the grenies while the shattering projectile boys are getting in range look at the treb count up to 11. Getting ready to open fire is going to force a full back out of Marine Lord. He needs to be careful, though, because his racks are going to be exposed along with any trade attempts in this area. You should constantly have Wingush army in the queue. Finesse is it. The pass guard are in. Going to force the full back. He's going to wish he had the wing guard army prep to push out again because he's going to lose one or two traps here. Oh, there it is. It's the queue's mark. This pass guard, like, they're, the they're actually doing a lot more damage than it seems here. Ah, well, we don't have enough hand cannons at some point, right? Mainly longbowmen there for moments. Now the horsemen trying to go in for a raid. Some he rewards here. I think Ooh. he knows about the trade. Well, it's yeah. not the craziest trade numbers. No, no, so no, no, far, no. Right? But, but like, he, he, he doesn't know, right? Like, he doesn't know how many are there. So he's just going to raid to the south side, expecting that to be the area because he knows the neutral trade is in the north. So it just makes sense. And yeah, there's the confirmation. Like, okay, back corner. He'll look to snipe out these villages as they build up. It's going to be tight, but I feel like the keep should be going up just in time for Marine Lord due to the build speed of the Chinese. It's going to cost him several villages, though. Oh, no reaction there. Bit surprising. Trap count still looking reasonably scary there with nine. But now palace guards are coming in. Feels like Viper needs to disengage. Yeah, he's going to wheel him away again. The pass guard, of course, 1.38 movement speed. They can just ignore the, uh, the man at arms. It's why I love pass guard against man at arms. You don't choose, like, you don't get to choose when you fight as the English. You're just being ignored. And while you're being ignored, you're losing these valuable trebuchets as they get chased down. Yes, they didn't cost much to build in terms of resource, but they did cost a lot of time. Who landing here goes for that extra gold. That's something Viper should have never allowed. 
It's oh, so hard oh. for him though because he's unprotected. Unprotected siege. Uh, 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 hello, hello, sir. Army away from home. Uh, oh wait, we're, oh, we're coffee break. I swear we, we weren't. We were only five minutes. Liar. Ten minutes at least, and now a price must be paid. He's in with the horseman. He's in with the man at arms, and it looks like the bombard and STB counts is going to be going down. But not that deep, right? One SOP, still six bombards on the field. Bombards maybe trying to find another angle at the top. Oh, finds another bombard here. So Viper has to be happy with that. I just looked at Viper's wood and it's very big. 10,000 in reserve. 10,000? What? I, I... <laughs> oh, he never scouted the gold. Viper, oh no, he, he saw the gold, no? No. If you see the. No, he doesn't. Oh, he has no icon on his map. He doesn't know oh, about God. the gold. Oh, oh, yo, yo, yo. That's a, a solid 16k gold swing. 8k that should have belonged to Viper. 8k that now belongs to Marine Lord. Mm -hmm. But in fairness, Viper's like, haha, infinite gold. Let me just put down more farms. I can definitely afford more farms with my 10,000 wood. <laughs> I just, like. <laughs> Is Viper try? I, I know Game of Legion, they, they do run those kind of like, you know, fundings for like planting trees things. Is this like Viper's side gig of trying to like raise <laughs> awareness about deforestation? <laughs> uh, what everything. And can your account looks solid? Oh, now with some nice raid here with the horseman. Hello. Defensive keep again. But Viper will find some military kills. Well, his center army looks strong. Look at that. It's Look simply 100 military against 66. Oh, I think the reload has too many villagers. It's not just that. It's actually more to do with what Viper's pushing, right? Like, he has all this wood because he's pushing hand cannoneers and man at arms. He has no need for wood. I don't even know why he's gathering almost 2,000 a minute. He doesn't, he doesn't even use it. Instead, it's the hard hand cannoneer push. Now up to 28. Then look on the other side. Marine Lord, barely a front line. 15 grenadiers looking to fight. But one on one, they are no match for these shredders here. Hand cannoneers pushing in. They don't have the ore anymore, but they're gaining ground. They're breaching Marine Lord's base. His Ford. Racks are falling, and it means with it, his production rates are falling too. Ooh, Viper playing such a good macro game here. Remember how much is on the line in this one. The final will be tomorrow. 30k for first, plus obviously a ticket to Red Bull for whoever wins the set. And Viper is pushing in deep. We see Marine Lord now dropping below. Pop on N60. Oh, the trade is gone. Most of the army is gone. The only thing that's holding on for Marine Lord are those Bambot Cannons. And they aren't going to hold on for long. They're running out of places to retreat. More hand cannoneers are going to be pulling to the front line for Viper. In the meantime, the Grenadiers trying to stand their ground, but less Pals Guard to actually hold their opponent at bay. Splash damage is looking good. Viper didn't go for the staggered formation, pays a price, and now he might be in trouble. Needs to retreat away. The Treb count at 10. It might not be for long. The Grenadiers getting in range. The long range holes here. But it takes a while to get through these trebuchets. In the meantime, it looks like the horsemen are going to munch for you. Man at arms as well with the gap close. Grenadier is being thrown away. And the trebuchets instantly turn around to punish again. While the wrap around from the horsemen find your eco lines. And apparently are trying to mate to create even more horsemen back here. Marine Lord, after the heavy over, boom, now drops below 90 villagers, simply because the raids were so good. More horsemen are diving in at the front. And look at that, Grenadier's now dying to the men at arms as well. Marine Lord again, below 160, and Viper can just decide where he wants to attack, and apparently through the center is what he prefers. I feel like Marine Lord read some ancient texts, and in them it said something about if you summon 100 like Grenadiers, you create a tactical nuke, because that number is growing, and everything else is shrinking right now in his military department. Like, that is... That is quite the hard push of Grenadiers. Like, Grenadiers are do you, nice units. Do you not just push Maganels if you're Viper? Against this? I think Horsemen are fine as well. You say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, okay, unless you get eight Bombard Cannon shots to your face. Yeah, that's kind of the problem here, right? Do you kill the Grenadiers or do you kill the Bombards? Doesn't matter. Either way, you're dying to an explosion. I think it could make sense for Viper to pull every single villager away from wood right now and just try to set yourself up for the full food eco. I mean, in fairness, he doesn't have many on wood right now. He's gone down to 200 income. It's not as ridiculous as it once was. And he, he does need a little bit of wood due to horseman push. In fairness, I think he has a little bit in there more. So, yeah, I agree. Like, you don't need anyone there at all. Push in. Grenadiers gonna stand their ground, staggered formation to make sure like it's an extra little bit of time running between each of them. And the Lombos, this is where they trade out well, the hand cannon is as well. This is the problem. This is where the Grenadiers are gonna be frustrated. That long range of the Lombos with the attack speed buffer as well. The reason Viper was taking bad trades on the other side of the river was a lack of aura. 
Once he gets that aura online, that's when it turns into a one-sided affair. I tried to build the tower, but I think it was placed over the traps there, so never really got up. Traps had to retreat. Could have been nice with better speed. Now goes for the last farm upgrade here is the Viper. Something we would have loved to see a bit earlier as well. And now queues up some more men at arms. Production has to be pretty crazy. Viper gets his unit out quite quickly. Still no trade setup, simply because he doesn't need to. Marine Lord queues up more and more traders. Yeah, I, I, I feel like this is just not the year for donkeys. <laughs> They're never surviving long enough to actually trade for Marine Lord. But he has to get the infinite resource generation somewhere, right? He knows the gold's eventually going to dry up and tax can give you some of the way, but like eventually it's going to be a problem. So tries to prep himself. And I think he needs to be more worried about his food and wood at this rate. Like that's probably going to dry up faster than gold, especially if you get raided like this. That's just a free entry. Man at arms in the meantime, do engage. Volley, increase that attack speed in conjunction with the network of castles means you're going to shred through these hand can uh, through these grenadiers rather like they are paper and hand cannoneers now pushing for the viper as well this is just a bad trade look at all the blue dead bodies compared to the red viper down to only pop 160 23 horsemen on the field i think or in the queue i think he could have committed even more there bit surprised feels like he has 12 stables producing though maybe we can look at the base a bit like the setup the infrastructure has to be crazy from both players. The, the problematic detail here for Viper right now is like, I think he's not going to have a strong enough eco to support a, a constant push if Marine Lord engages that. Marine Lord right now has like better eco count, but we do have to equate the difference in terms of like what Viper gets from food and gold on the farms that might be putting him ahead. It's a really deceptive matchup. There's so many small variables in terms of efficiency you have to consider because you know, we, we could also talk about the increased gathering rates for the English on these farms, but I think that's at least equaled out by all the granaries that Marine Lord has. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so as well. Food income, not that crazy in comparison. We are also an Im. We are getting all the upgrades, right? So yeah. relatively speaking, not the craziest thing anymore. And oh, that's not great. This engagement Ooh. against all those Nest of Beasts, though. Pushing them back. Nest of Beasts, this is the solution he's looking for now. Bombard's getting in range to start stripping down those outposts, getting rid of the attack speed buffer, the flank attack. Oh, oh my god, these boys, they, they definitely drew the short straw. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Doing nothing oh. there, being cleaned up. And the front line, it's bulking, it's breaking right now for Viper. And quickly, he's going to lose his production lines if he's not careful. Here come the horse horsemen, come in, though. he baited him in, he baited him in too deep. It's too deep for the Bombards to pull away. And it looks like the Siege Army might be going down, but he stands his ground. If he can get enough damage to the Grenies, he can survive this. But they spread out the torches. The Russian, the Man at Arms back up from the backstab point onto the Grenies to try and get rid of them. There's not enough horsemen left, though. The dead horses will signal the reigning superiority of the Siege for Marine Lord. Oh, and there were so many horsemen still at the top. Just look at the top corner now. Just imagine all those horsemen were there. I think he could have cleared up all the Siege there. I think it's like 20 horsemen. Look at that. Oh, just imagine them surrounding the siege. Apparently, he really likes gold. Like, at what point are you too greedy? Like, come on, dog. You're getting gold off your farms. You don't really need it this badly. And I think you're right. Like, the no, no concentration of force in the center. Maybe he's a bit paranoid about grenadiers, but like, at least go aggressive in your opponent's side of the map. Breach these walls, rush through your horsemen. I like the horsemen play. I just don't like the way he's splitting up his forces to use them. Aye, aye, aye. I, th I think like forcing the engagement at the same time while he was basically trying to clear up his land twice was a weird choice. I think just combining everything and then move in with like 60 horsemen could have been the best clear up of this game. Yeah, it's getting a little bit perplexing the way that this is shifting back and forth. I feel like Marine Lord is really starting to bolster himself a little bit. Like this trade network is not being harassed anymore. Like the donkeys are really paying off. His wood is going to be a problem, but wood's becoming a problem on both sides. Like Viper, he stripped his side of the map. And remember how we were talking about how he had 10,000 wood in reserve? Look at the number now. Mm -hmm. uh, Viper, I think he needs to see some more farms. Not really sure how many we have. I wouldn't mind to see like 20 or 15, 15 more farms, maybe. Could have been something. Oh, bees is a problem right now for Viper. Like, he's not pushing Springles at all. And there's six nested bees in the field. So this is this is going to disintegrate his back line. And that's a, the only thing stopping the Grenadiers, right? Like, Longbows versus Grenadiers, Longbows win. Once those Longbows are gone, good luck with your man at arms push. They're just dead. Same with, uh, with Horsemen as well, actually. I feel like Horsemen are just getting wiped out quite easily by the Grenadiers. Uh, 
Yeah, the thing is, if you can get the full surround, you can maybe make something happen. But yeah, simply like one army like this, that's obviously not going to do it. Yeah. Lots. Oh, <laughs> like, look at this, you just start a step back. Hold on, boys. Looks like he's going to get the backstab. Okay, this is an unfair representation of how good Grenadier's up against Horsemen. We, we get it, he has a lot of Horsemen. <laughs> but look how many died to kill these Grenadiers, yeah, yeah. though. Like, that, it doesn't feel good when you envelop him like that and still lose several Horsemen. I have 50 horsemen now. Do we want to go for the clear up or do we go for the biggest raid ever into then trying to go for the clear up? Oh, Viper just charges through the center. That's so bad. What uh, is he doing? No, 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 not this way. This way's bad. This way lies death. Grenadier is going to target onto the Lombos. Nesta in the meantime trying to defend themselves up against the horsemen. Not enough horsemen here to burst through the siege and all of a sudden Nesta will shift attention across the Lombos, forcing them away. Viper, oh. I, just, I don't know about this one, dog. I don't want to see what the kill count is. It's got to be pretty bad for the amount of horsemen he keeps running away. And even more now, the Nest of Beast splash damage. Heavy damage done, but now Viper switches it up. He shifts north side. He gets rid of the wolves. He's breaching in and now sniping out the trade line of Marine Lord. Oh, obviously he can't kill the trade post there, but can kill the keep and then maybe harass that angle. No, it's okay, this won't be well defended. Two traps only here, and that's why we can see army moving in. Feels like Viper doesn't have the answers, but enough hand cannoneers in the back, maybe. He'll hold, but it's going to cost him again, and he's running out of wood. In fact, he's out of wood. This is big. This is a big problem right now. He only has 200 in reserve, and he cannot afford to replace these horsemen, and they die so damn quickly. Is it maybe the full play? Do you have to commit into elite knights and men at arms and hand cannoneers from here? Simply go for all the units that don't cost wood. The only thing that you are allowed to invest into is Ma Vanguard army from here on. I just don't understand what oh, these traps. horsemen have done for him. They, they've done nothing. Traps in this really game. exposed. Whoopsie! Here they come, the torch boys, ready to play. Two of the trebuchets haven't even wheeled away. They'll be prime targets for him. The rest are going to try to retreat through, but the torch is being held in just in time. The follow-up fire from hand cannon uh, from the Grenadiers not good enough to take it out a second, but looks like two more trebs going down. Viper running out of siege, quickly replacing the up to 13 trebuchets. He can afford to lose one or two. My issue, however, is that you're starting to lose ground in the center. A lot Ooh. of ground. Oh god, this is getting really intense. Such a long game. We still have 11 traps on the field, so Viper not low on that end, but maybe Lidakor can take 15, 20 seconds when we don't have an engagement and scroll through the map and try to find extra wood lines that we still have. Seems like both players are disengaging now, and we can take a look at the setup. Okay, we still have like 3k, make it 6k wood over here, I would think, for the Viper. Is that it? I think that's it. Does he have more left? Like maybe a oh, baby tree here side. or there, but like practically all of it is Marine gone. Lot. Uh, Some stragglers. <laughs> yeah, Marine Lord's running out too. Day. Oh no. Oh no. But he has the infinite gold generation for the trade. It's still pretty healthy. So like, usually you say, okay, Viper's getting the lead because of how enclosures works. But like this, this trade from Marine Lord was really astute. The timing set it up. It's starting to return its investment now. And it's starting to yield a net positive for his eco. Okay, army gets really scary now, and still, remember, like, I don't think, like, English is super sad if they go for elite knights, elite men-at-arms, oh, and this. hand cannoneers. Well, look at this. This is a really interesting play by Marine Lord. He pulls north, and actually Viper, instead of going through the center, is responding. And this response could hurt him. He needs to be careful. Not many horsemen charging through here. Pass guard are going to clean them up. In the meantime, the man-at-arms, too slow to chase in. Looks like one of the Nesta is going to go down. But in a choke point where the pass guard can hold you, you can get shredded very quickly here. Grenadiers do arrive, and now the turnaround. It's a trap. It's too late to run. It's too late to hide. Look at the dead Englishman. Completely shrek there. And yeah, some troops were left behind. Viper will easily clear those up. But look at that now. Look at the food and gold that Viper is banking up. And I really want to see the farm count. Could we maybe quickly scroll over that and see how many farms we have? I think if we select the villager, we can see the farm count of the Viper. I wouldn't be surprised if we have like up to 60 farms already. Looks pretty good. And look at how much gold we are getting. 69, 69 farm! Literally the perfect to say number! <laughs> Feels fitting here, right? He needs to be careful because his fixation on, on farms over wood in this later phase of the game and the importance of it may actually screw him over. It's so problematic for him. Like, Treb's still looking healthy at least. He might be able to start sniping out the traders. And yeah, the hand cannon is in position because look what's happening from Marine Lord. Is he considering a dive? This could be risky, but he could actually breach fast and take out the landmarks. Comes a response oh. in line formation. Uh-oh. 
And Cannoneers are going to arrive from Viper. He's going to have to back up fast here. And the push in. Pass guard. Look what they're chasing for. Trebuchets. Straight away. In on him. Throws away the pass guard again just to get rid of one or two. Oh, but horsemen are diving uh, in again. I would love to see elite knights as well. One spray. What? Even that survived. It's just this goddamn grenadines. This is so ridiculous. I can't I believe. Think we need Huh? We need Springles. This is the spot for Viper going for four Springles. Yup. I, I mean, it, it's like, how does he do it though? Look at his wood. Okay. That's I the problem. That's always saying. been the problem. And it's just stupid because like, the only answer you have to these bombards is Horsemen. But remarkably enough, the unit that the Grenadiers are most effective against in this game is actually Horsemen. Viper attacking to Elite Knights. He's trying to go for the answer now. Should and have that's all what the he's upgrades. got, right? Food and gold. Yeah. Oh, he's never got chemistry. But Viper, oh. isn't chemistry working for hand cannoneers? Yes. But he never got not, chemistry. But it doesn't work for Trebs, right? It's like, it's, it's more value for Marine Lord because of all the units he's pushing in comparison. Um, but he's kind damage of, of gunpowder units by 20%. Nah. And he has 30 hand cannoneers, my friend. Nah. Don't make, try to make an argument that it's not for traps. But his attack speed aura, like, it gives him more than 20% damage increased. <laughs> no, I'm not going to defend it. I don't know what's going on there. It's kind of weird that he's missed that trick, considering how many he's got in the field. Now the push in, even more Grenadiers. I should point out that these Grenadiers that have been being pushed this whole time are cheaper, by the way. Remember, they would have been built around the Spirit Way with a 30% discount. It's why Marine Lord can just laugh as he throws away what feels like a million Grenadiers. I just wanted to say, okay, now we're getting in the spot where English late game is better. Ha 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 You're funny. And then I looked at the gold count of Marine Lord. You're so funny. Pretty damn crazy. <laughs> Did you doubt oh, the trade? I mean, <laughs> like, like the, apparently we forgot the if spots maybes of someone going trade. No, no, maybe. Maybe we thought it could be more raids, it could be more engagements, but... Well, Viper's still not going for the trade. Doesn't really need to as long as he keeps on mixing some horsemen. And uh -huh. Viper, I, I actually wouldn't mind if he tries to engage from the top. The problem, though, is simply... Okay, what do we do? We get 100 wood for 154. Great awareness there. We have 33 traders. That's a big army, though. Yeah, good luck getting more farm in China. Uh, they are moving on the gold. They're never running out. And uh-oh, Spaghetti-O, you came a little bit too far out to play a little one. JC with the pass guard. My god, the massacre. The Ura over the top. Only one and a three get a torch, but it's going to be good enough to burn a few down here. The Trebuchet is in trouble, and he's down to seven. Viper is running out of siege, and that's a problem because that's been the thing that's been keeping these bombards at bay. Uh oh, and loses a lot here at the front. Oh that was a beautiful God. engagement by Marine Lord. Oh, and those traps are going to die. More are going to die. We're down to four traps. Could be down to two traps pretty soon. Yeah, this is looking like the beginning of Castle Age. Not late into Imperial right now for Viper. And the hand cannon near count. He lost half of them. He's trying to reproduce them, but look at the Grenadier count. 42 in the field for Marine Lord. He's starting to starve out on food a little bit, and wood is drying up fast. But don't worry, even with crappy trade rates, I think you can afford it by trading with gold. Oh, well, some oh. raids in here now in the trade, or is it going to be into the trade? Might be into villagers, could maybe even take an Imperial official out, would be nice for him. But Viper deep in his base and down to pop right in 50. Viper in some real problems here. Marine Lord, like, oh, you killed a few of my villagers. Don't worry, though, I can afford unlimited grenadiers! <laughs> 11 more in the queue, some more. Okay, Elite Knights are now coming in. Nest of this B count, big. non existent. Spears. Uh oh, Spearman count. Reasonable, though. Enough to brace in this choke point. That's all he needs, because as soon as you turn and burn, look at the damage coming out and the formation shuffle. Remember, Nilly, these are home seeking grenades, so as you try to regroup on the exit, you're doing more damage to your troop line. Oh, God. Elite Knights now trying to take another angle there, but more oh, coming. some more from coming. the bottom, but more spearmen engagements. Viper's trying to wrap around. Could be his last dance if he significantly loses this fight. Bombards. Plenty protected. Only a few knights make it through. Bombards are will back. One is going to fall, but the choke point working for Marine Lord. And look how quickly the knights are fallen. They're being baited in this fight. It's taking far too long, and they are being eviscerated by the bombard line. Oh boy.
boy, 160 population. Vipers Q not looking incredible either. Goes for lots of longbowmen, hand cannoneers, some winged army, now some more horsemen, but doesn't excite me too much. Traps are trying to make something happen, but the splash isn't the greatest thing against the split formation of Marine Lord. And even after all those raids, Marine Lord still looking healthy. 100 villagers, 97 military. The crazy part about this matchup is actually Grenadiers are a cost effective tanky unit. If you check their health, they're actually not that squishy. Whatever the cost as well, right? With the Spirit Way especially. So, like, he's just using them as cannon fodder 24-7. Like, 164 health nearly. 164 health on a ranged unit. Ah, doesn't sound fair indeed. And we have Palace Guard with some reasonable numbers. And... Wingard Army, the only thing that Viper can really afford, is getting back to population limit. Nice for him. Now another push there at the top. That's the only angle that we found still had wood. So the really important angle to push for. Viper is pulling everything. Both players now with close to 100 military each. I'm more concerned about the gold. Like, Marine Lord, uh, I don't think he's playing the Chinese anymore. I think he's the Swiss. He's moved into banking. Like, this is <laughs> unlimited gold right now, and I just don't see how Viper can keep up if they start to hard push again. Like, he has to take very good trades in these fights. Oof. Obviously, all the ideas with wonders completely off limits. The player will invest into the wood. Stone not really an option anymore, and uh, I think this game will simply go over who has the better trade versus who has the better farms. Those are the two limiting factors. If Viper loses lots of farmers, he might be out of this game. If Marine Lord loses all his trade and 14,000 gold, he's out of this game. Oh yeah, just 14,000, not too much then. That seems reasonable. Well, what a reasonable win condition you've given Viper, Nelly. I can definitely tell you're his teammate, you traitor. No, this is, this is frustrating for him. It's just such a lot to get through, and he probably doesn't realize just how high the number is. Like, this is the deception of pushing Grenadiers like he has. With that 30% discount, it allows you to accrue a ridiculous surplus in gold. Okay, yeah, let's just ignore just that. that that's definitely not, that's not animal friendly what I just saw that. Ay, 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 ay. Okay, game stabilized. More traps in the queue in addition to the Wingard's army. Six traps apparently not enough for the Viper. Oh god, this is this is impossible to call. I don't know what the next steps should be. I think one thing I would have liked to have seen out of Marine Lord is more walls. Like we talked about wonders, and I can tell you only one player could actually go for a wonder if he could afford it, and it would be Viper. The mm. reason is that Marine Lord has left his base wide open, and these raids keep happening. Imagine if you built a wonder here. Like, your opponent could just rush him with horsemen and torture. Like, th this is kind of the awkward thing. Viper had the better, more natural cliffs, though, to yes. wall the map. It Like, Marine Lord needs a massive investment. If you wanted to wall the whole map, it feels like 2,000 stone. For sure, but like what you do is you retract your walls away from the crossings because so far Viper hasn't really been able to breach the north or southern crossing with his traps, right? Like he hasn't mm -hmm. moved beyond those choke points. So what you do is you just build them far enough back. It is an investment, but it's unlikely they're ever going to get breached because Viper doesn't want to sacrifice his traps. Like honestly, I, I can't think of a single thing he's cared about more. Like doesn't care when his man arm dies, doesn't care when his horseman dies, doesn't care when his archers or his, his hand cannon is dies, but his trebuchets, oh, they're his precious. They're his favorite children, right? They're not allowed to die. Oh, big army mass here. Not great against Nest of Fees or the Grenadiers Viper, but the big split, though. Oh, but the, the, the hand cannon is just focus on the hand cannon is right now. Like, they aren't split. Heavy damage could be done there. And now instead, the Palace Guard dive in once again, going after his precious Trebs with the backstab as well. Going to find two for their trouble. And the wrap round, the push through, through the front line. Going to find additional casualties here. The Treb line being hit hard. And Viper, remember, struggling in the wood department will struggle to replace these units. But Viper remembers that chemistry is the thing. Finally goes for it with his 18 hand cannons on the field. Obviously built. At, it feels like at least 100 hand cannons this game. And now we have 60 palace guards in the queue for Marine Lord. Oh. Viper needs those hand cannons ASAP. Oh, he needs to master a lot of villages, maybe. Knights starting to find the trickling of reinforcements. But these bombards, they don't go down easily, son. Clock tower bombards with the 50% increased health as well as the additional health through the university tech. Yeah, that's going to be difficult to get through. This doesn't feel fair. That you can, that six elite knights can jump on a bombard and won't find the kill. This can't be what we intend. I mean, that's, that's like saying, oh man, it's so dumb that three knights can't kill this villager. 
and then you ignore the fact that he's surrounded by like five spearmen. This <laughs> is like, yeah, <laughs> seems reasonable. The problem is he's diving in with like inconsequential numbers. So like Marine Lord's small cluster of reinforcements after he loses his frontline troops are enough to buffer that away. Wait, did <laughs> that villager look like he sprouted out of the ground for a second? God damn the animations on this map. <laughs> oh. Shouts is someone no. who decided they couldn't be asked to put in like a, a sinking animation for, for like infantry and land units so that whenever units die on these crossings, they instantly just disappear. Well, habits. By the way, we have 17,000 food for the Viper and 19,000 gold for Marine Lord. Quick updates on the banks. I think Marine Lord might try for a wonder soon, actually. Like, because he's not running out, right? Yeah, he, he can buy it. He could technically buy it. Yeah. I think like buy it over time is a really good call because obviously like the over time the the trade values reset, right? So it becomes more valuable long term. Um, but in the meantime, gaining some ground here. Pass. <laughs> They're actually trying to go to the north side, but there's a second line here from Viper to hold you at bay. He tries to rush through, but he's going to be forced to engage. Bad trade coming out from Marine Lord here. Once again, the army just going to get white, but. There'll be enough Grenadiers left at the crossing to buff a Viper away. Okay, Viper. How many farms does he have now? I think he added some, right? Only thing that makes sense. Who is he? Did he wall himself Viper. off? Uh, yes, he did. He did wall himself. He never put down a gate. And he just okay. revealed that he wants to trade. Wait, did he lock Please. the gate? Did the, no. Uh, no. Please tell me he didn't. Like, why are they here? <laughs> why are you here? We want to fight uh, too. Viva the England! No, no, please, just start trading, please. Uh, lots of Ombrots and lots of traps dying here, by the way. Look at that, Longbowman cannot really protect them, so lots of stuff dies here. And let's take a look at the Bombards as well, because they are in danger, but Army is chasing down. No Nest of Peace, not a lot of Grenadiers here as well. But the Men at Arms, they start fighting against the Palace Guards instead of chasing down the low HP Bombards. Uh, good luck getting those Bombards, good luck ever getting Marine Lord below 5 here. The push for the Man at Arms is so slow, the Hand Cannon is quick to assault that Remnant Bombard just in time. Look at what's happening on the other side, the Trebuchet is being dove for, it's just so much easier for the Palace Guard. What you actually should do, if you're Marine Lord, to simply buy five to 10,000 wood here. Because if you buy it later, it will get more expensive. And you're trying to increase the prices for your opponent as well. Yeah, I mean, you can deflate it on his side, but like, you, you don't see him really pushing that much in the way of wood units, right? Like, you assume that, that trap yeah. build up with just wind guard pass units, so. Mainly I, for traps and repair. Yeah. Like, it, it could be good for carrying out the repairs. Like, the problem I just see right now is <laughs> this is not ending. Someone really should be going for a wonder, but no one wants to blink because they're reinvesting so fast that, like, there's always one resource that's lacking. And if they go for a wonder, that's going to be a big gap in their push rate. Yeah, wonder, wonder's a bit out of, of limits here. Keep now going in. Oh, this is a big wrap round. Both of 99 military. Look at that. Just a small pull of pass guard to hold him up. Bane, he baits him into the fight. Need to get away from this fast because the Grenadiers and the pass guard will make mincemeat of you. And look at the way he follows him back into the choke point to protect the bombards. The flood through is not going to be there. Viper taking heavy casualties, just trying to breach. And it looks like he's starting to give over ground and bulking under the pressure. Keep goes down. Outpost goes up to give the aura once more. The push through, maybe this time he can make it to the backside. But the question mark is whether there's actually enough horsemen here to finish what was started. Oh, it feels like so many horsemen died on the way and so many just moving back and forth. Tricky move, keep goes down. Just imagine with this fight, we had five demos clearing up whole of Marine Lord's army. <laughs> yeah, they probably would have killed like two, uh, two infantries maybe. <laughs> Don't trust in the demo ships, Dilly. They're a big fat lie. These bombards, they're starting to gain ground. They're gaining traction. This is problematic. Viper is hemorrhaging fast. He can't keep up with the demand of this war. Look at the pop cap. No longer anywhere near 200. While Marine Lord screams, Unlimited China! Charging in deeper. Hand cannon is a no match anymore. Not being pushed in a fast enough quantity for Viper. As the bombards take out additional infrastructure, getting rid of that ore extension and allowing Marine Lord to reach it deeper. Viper's production looks pretty solid though. Let's take a look. Horseman so where maybe going? trying to stabilize could have been another option. He goes no! for the bombard again, but I don't even think they will find the kills. He won't get one. Clock tower too strong. God damn it. These bombards never dying. He at least 
Cleaned up the front line though. He reset Marine Lord a little bit, but notice that Marine Lord is slowly wiggling his way deeper and deeper, and Viper still around 150 pop cap, while Marine Lord is up at 200. They are both at the same in terms of eco, which means that it's double the military force. Marine Lord really just restricting and, and just overloading, uh, over, overruling rather. The one-child policy of China. It's unlimited birth-making here, as it seems it's never-ending push power from China. Uh-oh, uh-oh, Viper might be overwhelmed here. This is crazy. 56 military only. The queue is not that long for the Viper anymore. No more wood, no more gold. It's tricky to replace. Is Marine not finally breaking the Viper here? He's gonna smash him into bits. Like, look at the gains on the ground here. I, I honestly, it's confusing to me how so many people can be hired to guard one palace, but when they die this fast, it makes sense, right? Just pass in the bloody uniform and say, yep, nothing happened here. Your predecessor didn't die in a war. Just keep pushing. And he will keep pushing. Look at the count. Always up at 200, barely being put below 190. And all the while, Viper now shrinking, shriveling up and beginning to decay as he's down to 130 pop cap. He can barely get the military troops out quick enough enough before they die. Trap count down to one. Look at that, not a single unit in two digits right now after the longbows are falling and so much coming in. Another keep here to reinforce to stabilize this position. Viper drops around pop 130. That's before simply not deep. enough. 30 military against 90. Marino is making it happen. He's going deep, he's going fast. The bomb bars are really beginning to gain traction. There's just no counter to the Ford keep on the crossing now. Marino says, I am here to stay, and you are gonna have to pray. Game four goes your way, because game three belongs to Marine Lord. And Chinese is coming through, and that's why I'm here as the expert analyst and not Beastie Cutie. Ah, oh, what a beautiful game and what an execution by Chinese. You simply saw how well they can do if they have unlimited gold. And as we can see, villager count a bit higher for Viper for so long. Marine Lord in the end simply getting the crazy death ball of the Chinese rolling. Yeah, Beastie, what was he said? Like English wait, uh, English wins all super late games. I think he was talking about mirror matchups. That makes a little bit more sense because they, they definitely didn't have uh, the Karenis number here. Like this is just, the resistance felt futile. I just love the push for Marine Lord, like nonstop. Like honestly, it just felt like conscription rule was in place for the Chinese. And we know how big their population is in real life. Definitely represented in the game. Uh, and the issue here is always the bomb bars. Like Viper over fixates it. He wants it gone so badly instead of cleaning up the, the frustrating Grenadier patch. I feel like Mangonels could have been a good pivot for Viper, but by the time it seemed like a good choice, he was out of wood, right? And Mangonels are not cheap. Yeah, Mangonels, well, what can you do against that mass amount of bombards? KD in the end better for Marino simply because his siege was doing so well and economy will obviously be interesting. Who got more gold there? Food seems to be better for the Viper. 167k against 132k <laughs> and Marine Lord roughly 20k more gold for him. Over 100,000 gold gathered by Marine Lord this game. Timing can be different from player to player. It can indeed. And I'm excited to see if Marine Lord can extend his lead. Like this is considered his signature sieve here in game number four. Can Viper stick a fork in the spoke? Can he trip him up here? Can he make sure that the plan doesn't play out perfectly? And you mentioned those wheelbarrow timings. I can't quite remember how like Viper tends to open this because he's been a little bit more fluid. But I know Marine Lord likes to time his wheelbarrow for just about 10 seconds into Feudal Age, it completing. Mm -hmm. So basically getting it shortly before clicking up then, I would assume, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or like building, or like it's, building I think the School it's, of Cavalry. It's about maybe a third into the way of School of Cavalry being built is probably like roughly okay, around okay. I see, when I see it quite often out of them. So how is the opening? Like nine on food and then five on gold? No. Okay. I can, I can already see both players going for the mining camp. So that's not an option. Yeah. So they'll more slow gather onto the gold. They don't, and then they'll hard focus on the food in the meantime. And, you know, we talked about the, the idea of like spawns and how that can affect things, how that can impact who has an advantage. And I feel like Marine Lord has an advantage here. Like you can see um, there's less easy flood in points into his main base, but also the amount of reserve wood he has is actually absurd. At the top there, right? Yeah. It's like he, he, he is so comfortable in the late game. Also one extra gold spot there, gets in relic there. That's easily walled for him. I think even those two woodlands are connected. So like he, he can easily get massive control over like a quarter of the map.
you can just connect between this forest line and the one to the southeast of your TC, right? It's a big gap, but it's actually value for the amount of space you secure. Mm -hmm. Also, your main gold here feels very easy, very natural. Like 150 wood invested, and and you can't really get raided without getting or without noticing it. Mm -hmm. And one other thing I'm kind of thinking towards is like something that has been really experimental and has been switching up a lot in the last two three weeks is this could easily reach castle age and if it does like where are we going landmark wise right because we've seen some royal institute enthusiasts and it looks spooky in the right hand so mm -hmm. that's something to keep an eye out for around the 20 minute mark is if someone has an edge they might try to in extend that edge by going into the royal institute yeah i think good indicator is how many knights are still left if you think like okay i still have like 12 15 knights left then royal institute is a bigger payoff then for example if you have like two three knights left and try to muscle up your numbers again and then obviously it's a bigger investment you kind of go more into the military or into the economic economic direction with the guild hall yeah and uh, of course the guild hall like it's kind of awkward because guild hall feels like you always want to get it. It's very compelling, right? Same way that I'd say like Golden Gate is like in the late game, as later on you go, the better it feels because it's just like this great way of getting resources. But Royal Institute really is a, a playing to win philosophy and it can sting you in a, like a, a stalemate type matchup. But I think what's been happening a lot is players don't kind of identify if it's a stalemate game or not. They just blindly go Guildhall. Instead of thinking I could actually win this game in the next five or 10 minutes, they get paranoid about losing the game 30 minutes from then. Mm -hmm. Well, it's like Guildhall just feels so strong for the late game, right? You can dictate, okay, do I want to go into stone? Do I want to go into gold there? Some people even want to keep their food economy running. And it just feels like, okay, if this game is stable now, it might be stable in 30 minutes. And then Guildhall was actually bigger, a better investment than the Royal Institute. It's one of those tough ones because I feel like, you know, the whole idea of stability is the game stable. Like, how much can Royal Institute interrupt that stability, right? The researchers are cheaper and they're very powerful. It's not just Royal Bloodlines, it's also the Arbor Trier upgrades, which are phenomenal, especially if you just get into an Arbor versus Arbor push, like it can allow you to overwhelm your opponent. So it's definitely something to consider. Um, I think the Arbor specific strategy is a little bit weaker than it was before, just because of the Mango power spike now, but mm -hmm. it's still something to consider. We're jumping ahead of time though. We only just reached Feudal. We're kind of getting a little bit too excited. We we can sense this game isn't going to be over soon. I, I I could just tell. Like it's the way these two players play the game and how committed they are. They don't throw away an easy win. I think we're going to be here a while, especially when we see that Marine Lord isn't even pushing a knight yet. Okay, now he does, and that's mainly because he was focusing on Wheelbarrow a bit earlier. Mm. Viper didn't go for... Okay, Wheelbarrow as well. So slightly earlier night for Viper, slightly earlier Wheelbarrow for Marine Lord. Pretty all... Well, overall pretty even. This is kind of surprising to me. Like, Marine Lord, how long has he got left on the Wheelbarrow? Because usually... When you go for Wheelbarrow earlier on... You seconds, I would think. Yeah, because whenever you go Wheelbarrow later, um, it's because you want to get the first knight out, right? And that's, yeah, that's why he's behind. If you notice, Viper's already got his first knight in the field. Like, he got it out 10 seconds ahead of Marine Lord because he delayed his wheelbarrow. This seems cool because it gives Viper a slight edge militarily, but you're actually sacrificing a decent amount of eco in comparison. He snuck around. Could be that villager. Four exposed there. Scout sees it, and that means limited gold for Marine Lord. Still has a reasonable amount, though, so that's not the worst thing. But Viper might feel okay. Your knight protection won't be unlimited. Yeah, and meanwhile on the other side, you see Marine Lord getting the info and nice mirror movement there from Viper trying to block out the Knight, but he ignores him and dives straight towards the gold line. Will force more idle time for Viper as it was six villages compared to four. Won't be able to snipe Viper out the charge the side. Okay, good opening for the Viper. Still harassing that area. Marine Lord still can get another one. And Marine Lord actually went for Spearman Whoopsie. defense. Look at that. Mm -hmm. I wonder if this is going to be multi-TC then. Like, I usually like the Spearman play when it's followed up by a TC boom. If it's just Spearman on its own, it can feel a little bit perplexing because now you just offer up the option for Viper to go into Archers in a situation where he's already pushing more Knights than you are. Okay. Well, going to be an interesting approach. Obviously, neither player on stone so far, so will be mainly Knights. And, oh, Viper is now on stone. Look at that. A villager just being sent in there. Now the question mark, is that for some arrow slits or is he trying to think about the second town center? He looks delayed. He hasn't set up the mining camp yet. 
I think he's going to form more villages for a money count. In the meantime, nice brace coming out there. No follow-up damage to assist here. So the Spearman's just going to be sacrificed. Does decent damage against the Knights, but really you want one defensive Knight there to really punish Viper for that dive attempt. Nice. Oh, snipes nice. out with the Knights. Three versus three Knights on the field, but Marinot obviously will have more Spearmen. Knights are back there, coming in for the gold. And now we see Chivalry. Oh, oh, will you find yeah. the kill? <laughs> yeah. Nice. I mean, this is without blacksmith upgrades, right? So if you don't have the double charge there, you don't insta-kill the villagers off. That's something that Viper does need to fix soon. Curious to see if he's going to actually choose to go get the TC a bit quicker to get the blacksmith upgrade. Looks like he's hard committed to TC, though. Another brace. Yeah. All right, this time it's going to sting. Yeah, you have to back away. You, you can't trade out two and two there. Yeah, you need to wait for Chivalry to finish, then heal up. Oh, scout a bit out of position. Gets away, though. Yeah, a nice pullback there with the Spearman straight away. Marine Lord isn't going to offer up an opening to Viper. So Viper will just have to wheel his way around. It looks like he's actually getting all aggroed in. He actually might lose a, a knight for that. Actually, he baits him. He goes around the other side. <sighs> Gets out just in time as well. That was pristine micro coming out from Viper. Oh, stone villagers have to be pulled. Viper sits at 204 stone. Goes for the straggler for now. Can't really afford to have those villagers out on the map. Still, he is not going for the barracks. Feels like, okay, if I get the town center up, I will be safe. Don't need to go for the spearmen. He's back with the knights again. It's kind of weird. It kind of feels like Viper's opening was broadcasted more so than Marine Lords, right? And that's why it feels like Marine Lords should be able to get the secondary TC up first. It comes down to stone versus wood, right? One's lacking in the wood department, one lacking the stone. But it looks like Marine Lords should be able to get his wood more freely than Viper was able to get his hands on stone. Oh, what, what is this? Charge in. One easy kill. Spearman wasn't there to brace. That's kind of frustrating. Like, if you had him in place and he's bracing there, you stun the knight, he doesn't even get a chance to kill off that villager. Poof. Nice pick off by Viper again. He's now ahead by three villagers. That one earlier knight. Really paying off Viper now, the town center next to gold. Keeps the villagers on. What? Ooh. Okay, replaces the town center. Uh, Similar timing for both of them. Viper goes for the wood upgrade as well. More economic approach out of him. Please tell me that that TC is now building. Please tell me that TC in the north is now building. I hope it's building. Because if he's just standing there staring at it, it's going to be a problem. Like, Marine Lord was blocked out with the deer. It looks like, yeah, he did push them apart. A little bit delayed, though. I like this positioning. We talked about, like, how he has a very defensible fauna. Uh, corner, corner. Meanwhile, Viper... This TC is going to be a bit exposed. He's going to spread out in a very awkward way. It's very important that Viper contains the midfield and has control there. Otherwise, Marino will get opportunities to chip away at him in the coming minutes. <sighs> tricky, tricky situation here. Very much mirror matchup. And now we see the expansion there. Viper didn't go for the deer at the left-hand side, but for the right-hand side, it also builds the tower next to it. And six knights on the map for him. Only three for Marine Lord. Some spearmen there for the defense. Marine Lord still with more knights in the queue. And this one should be better for the Viper. The weird and wacky part is that Viper's in a situation where he's playing for three TCs. It looks like on the stone anyway. I think he's maybe pulling off now. Yeah, okay. So, but it, I don't understand the stone then. Is this like, this might be that he feels that the aggression could be coming or that he has an opportunity to be aggressive. So now he's pulling off a stone, but it also could be that he forgot he was still in stone and he just pointlessly grabbed 209 for nothing. Uh, I'm not sure either. Doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah, I could have pulled those away. 30C doesn't feel likely with that wood amount. Also that layout, like three TCs with his current layout is very very punishable, right? He doesn't have a, an easily defendable location. Oh, well, maybe Viper. the deer at the left hand side could have been an option. He didn't get the charge off. It's oh, just a bad run. trade. I need to heal up. Then he will be fine. Can obviously go to his town center. And both players still continue to produce some knights. I don't really think we will see too much damage taken from either player, though. Feels like double town center setup, enough army, and a lot of vision on the army of your opponent. It's good enough. Viper goes for Eli. Without archery Range rangers damage? down already. Is that for town centers? Does that work for town centers? I'm trying to think. I, I actually never tested that. I, I imagine so, because it increases the damage of every range unit, right? Well, it doesn't affect siege though. Huh. In Ancient Pass 2 does increase the range damage of all ah, non-siege units and yeah. buildings. So it does, yeah, yeah. Hello, I mean, like, I, I, the damage. Yeah, it, it sounds like it makes sense. Like, I, I, did, I definitely knew that Siege didn't get it, but 
Yeah, it makes sense. Um, just it could also be oh. him prepping for an immediate switch into archers, but in the meantime, he's in trouble. The rush through, heavy hit there. Doesn't get the final strike out in the injured villager though, so it looks like Viper gets one away from inevitable death. And the other side is a trade out. Moves in, strikes one down. Still has a one point lead over Marine Lord, but it's not substantial at this stage. Yeah, relatively speaking, like 2% advantage, not that important anymore. Knight still with the defense. And both players think starting to think about casting this one. Look at that. Actually, Archer range coming up. Archer with the defense tower and now there next to the wood line. But knights are coming in. The raid at the bottom again. And Viper out of uh -oh. position. Uh-oh. Wood in trouble in Viper's base. There it is. Heavy attack coming in on him right now. We don't care about the one-on-one -on -one knight. We care about this tower rush up. It's going to cost Viper dearly here. Too many visitors on the front line. Holds in the choke point. The casualties kept to a minimum. Viper keeps it neck and neck on the eco count. The knight count, however, is very one-sided here. Marine Lord on point with the micro. Essentially wiping Viper's military force. Oh, can we find some exit kills? Indeed we will. So only three knights left after this one. And Viper with a solid defense. Villager count close to one. Again, only five villagers out here. And it feels like we are still in a very even game. Second stable now being added. But I don't think he will use that one before clicking the guild hall. Well, th this is where things really start to kind of diverge. You see on one side, Viper wants to go for Castle, and Marine Lord, he definitely looks like he's reinvesting right now. He's producing three knights, so I, I'm not sure what? that this is going to be a rush up. He's playing into the boar as well. Like, this is the extension of aggression. Marine Lord doesn't want to move up, although he wants that knight to move out of the way. Like, come on, dude. <laughs> we're trying we're, like, we're trying to kill a boar here. Can you please get your rowdy horse under control? How, oh, why dear. is Marine Lord investing into more knights here? Because he has a lead. Like, Viper? So, so Marine Lord's this percentage player, like he describes himself as a calculated player, like if he takes a slight lead, he feels he can snowball it. And he sees the value in increased aggression when he has a slight snowball. He's going to punish these pocket ecos that Viper start to structure up. However, with the double outpost preemptively, Viper will not be found too greedy here. However, the shift of villages across gets him in just before the initial strikes come in to finish a few off. That was a little bit nice. too close though. Arrow slits now coming in as well, and only three knights won't be enough to punish the five even low HP ones. Royal Institute for Viper. So even though he go. only has three knights on the field, he still feels that's his choice. Think about what he's set up for here, though. You're going to see more archery ranges, I think. I, I think that's the play now, because you, if you pull into Arbitrage and you get the stirrups, you get all those upgrades from the Royal Institute. My god, do they blitz through these knights. Okay, I'm curious about that. Now kills the wolf there in the corner. More knights are coming over, pulls the spearman as well. And Viper, let's see if he reacts instantly again. Could see the knights, villager moving, but that was not by choice. Uh oh, uh -oh. Garrison, Garrison, Garrison. Uh, there's not Stop. enough room in this house, sir. And now he's committing with the torches. Needs to be careful, though. Oh, knight upgrade coming out soon for Viper. Still delayed. You can see he's now starting to push out the Arbolid trees. Needs to be careful. Secondary Red Marine Lord starting to reach numbers where he can split up the Knights to look for juicy treats in his opponent's base and on the pocket ecos at the same time. Oh, I'll tear first one now coming out. Oh, that's a bit of a loss here for wow. Marine Lord. I'm a bit surprised by that. This is oh, big. but that's a this big, big. Unprotected. And he doesn't see it. The TC doesn't give vision into Stealth Forest. Heavy damage is going to be rendered here. Villages running around. Looks like the textile is going to save the day, so they can't be instantly finished off. But now you get to this precarious situation where you get 10 plus villages that are close to death. Let's fight. Oh, and those knights, they didn't get oh, the hits off. Oh, the elite status only just came in. He can't get the charge at the beginning of the fight. Frustrating situation now as Viper. Looks like Marine Lord is willing to trade out. He still has the numbers in his favor. He's going to dive towards the TC and the Arbolid Trees. Looks like he's training out his army because this is just cover fire. Look what Marine Lord is doing. He's in the middle of tech up on his way up to Castle himself in a situation where he's built up a healthy eight point lead in the eco department. Ooh, okay, and he is tacking with Royal Institute himself. So he's okay, right? But you are going for lots of army. Well, then I will try to match that as well. Another knight right here, and those villages a bit further away from those outposts. But Marine Lord not committing. No, he, he wants to try and maintain midfield control, but not throw away what little he has left, right? Like, because he hasn't rebuilt the army very quickly here. He he sacrificed essentially the same cost as his tech up in terms of military force on that front line. 
Look what it's going to be. Raw Insta 2 on both sides. He spotted in his opponent's base. And usually when you see your opponent goes Raw Insta 2, a lot of players try to play Greedily Guildhall for hyper late game. But he understands that it's too big of an edge to give over to Viper after he threw away his Vanguard force in the back of Viper's base. Oh, now heavily on stone is the Viper maybe for the keep next to his stables. Something we also have to think about is the relic control now. We already see the monastery from the Viper, something we don't see from Marine Lord yet. Mainly because he just arrived in Castle Age. Maybe a way to set yourself up for the long game advantage. Relics, one safe in each corner and three somewhat in the middle. One close to the tower of Marine Lord there, so should be a slight advantage for him. Yeah, I think he's better posture to get free relics. The only one that's a question mark is the one on the left side, the furthest left. Like the, the one that he's camping on the board and the one at the back, that's guaranteed. So he's getting at least 200 gold per minute trickle. And oh dear, oh dear. An increase in the eco department again for Marine Lord as he moves in and scouts out the villagers trying to build up the defenses. Two more will go down. Counter raid. I'm on a coming in. Should be in oh, instant reaction. Beautifully done, Good Marine job. Lord. Not gonna skip a beat here. However, the march around, he understands. Wood has to be a heavy investment. You're in the middle of a farmland transition, but he doesn't hang around. Viper, despite the value on that tree line, he doesn't go for it. Hello? Oh, nice move nope. here. We'll block this one off. By the way, no Free textile TC. here from Marine Lord. Unlike that, Viper will actually find the TC. ABT is now for the defense. Villager wise, Marine Lord plus 13. And that's the third town center. Yeah, apparently after you kill several of your opponent's villagers, you feel the need to get even more villagers, despite the fact you're both approaching 100 already. So, interesting choice out of Marine Lord. Marine Lord now making his way into Le Royal Bloodlines. Which <laughs> would be very frustrating for Viper, because I, I hope he's got them by now, considering his night push, but I wouldn't be surprised if he hasn't teched it yet. Viper's Abolitaire's not really adding too much here so far. Not even Canted oh, Saddles? No, Come on! That's ludicrous. That's surprising. Like, That's indeed surprising. Even more so when you consider he built up first and he built the Roll Institute. Like, if you're not going to use it, why have you got it? Right? Like, at this point, a guild hall would have been better for Viper. Mm -hmm. Also, Viper, still not a single relic for him. Although he had the monastery relatively early. Mm -hmm. this, this can be one of the weaknesses of going for a 50-50 split like oh, Viper oh, did. Oh. oh, no! The villagers! And he even marches deeper to get on top of them. The path going to force them around. And they're actually building more housing! You won't need housing if you die like this. Four villagers going down in the blink of an eye, and he'll just march back into the forest from whence he came. Uh, tries to cut off like, some reinforcement, try wait, to go for something. I think it's even the forest town center. Yeah, it's four TCs. It's four TCs from Marine Lord. He's going to have so much disposable villager force. And this is crafty because it means he doesn't care about these raids. Like, he, essentially, Viper has to find double the amount of kills, and he just can't because the amount of time he's pulling towards these TCs and not striking targets. Uh, gets a raid at the top. Not sure if Viper actually will find any here, it feels like. Oh, at Absolutely least not. the one at the top will find some kills. Yeah, but he's 20 villagers behind. He knows about the third TC. He doesn't know about the fourth in the corner, right? So, like, he knows his opponent has a slight ego lead, but he'll feel like chipping away like this is good value. We know it's not. It's not good enough what you're doing here. He's finding some really solid damage, right? He was 20 behind. Now it's 13 behind. Knight's still around. And it forced Marino to go back home. So Viper won't be unhappy with this raid at all. But the trades are going to be bad whenever he fights now, right? One side has raw bloodlines, yeah, yeah. the other doesn't, and the other's still not yeah. researching it. Like, I, I, I'm i still perplexed as to why Viper got this Royal Institute. It, he's not used it for anything at all. Was it a misclick, maybe? Is there a chance? <laughs> that would be a crazy misclick. Like, the, usually the people, they cancel and rebuild, right? When it's a misclick. Well, it's something you don't realize for quite some time, right? It's happened in another ST tournament. What was it? I think... Steel Series Prime Cup or something? Possibly. I, I feel Where like he opened Chamber of Commerce. Oh yeah, but I feel like by now those type of mistakes happen less because the structures look different as you build them, right? So players have got okay. better at going, oh yeah, actually this is the wrong thing, and they'll just cancel it. Especially Chamber of Commerce. I don't think we're ever gonna see someone accidentally build Chamber of Commerce in an S tier event anymore because you can tell it's not a school of cavalry and they've seen it so many times by now. <laughs> oh, yeah. I hope oh, at least. Oh, uh, I'm not finding too many kills with the Abilities, apparently. He, he can't because of the, the raw bloodlines. Like, and he's, this, this is the, the thing that I was trying to get into. is like Because he went for a 50-50 split, these raw institute upgrades aren't as valuable for him individually. So he's not actually prioritizing them. Meanwhile, Marine Lord, what is he even pushing? Look at, look at what he's got in the field. 
I'm not going to count the priest as a, an aggressive unit here, even if the pop cap count does. It's simply knights, and it means that raw bloodlines has been incredibly valuable for the French player in blue. A marine lot now going for ranged upgrades and against ranged upgrades. Interesting. Still, Delacour not happy with the upgrades that we are not seeing from Viper's End. Now, finally, finally, Royal Bloodlines in the queue. 35% more HP on the Knights. I think Viper's trying to muscle up for a massive Castle Age all in here, but the keep obviously will prevent that. Yeah, honestly, like right now, all those red Knights, all their horses are just looking at Viper and going, like, very disappointed, <laughs> right? All these minutes and no raw bloodlines. <laughs> like, why do you hate us so much? Oh, I tried to rewall this one. Not going to be easy. Abiliteers need to go home. Viper tries to wall around the corner. Not sure if that's actually going to work, but Marino goes back. Yeah, he doesn't want to waste time, too much time torching. Because, like, while he's trying to breach these walls while they're being rebuilt, like, what's happening elsewhere? What's Viper doing? What Marino is likely to do here is tech up. I think he's just going to save surplus for Imperial. And when he arrives into that Imperial Age, clearly ahead of Viper, like he's going to dominate him. It, it's really scary for Viper, unless he can make some critical eco stab in the next minute. Viper's maybe finding some raids against all the gold of Marino. Can he maybe delay the M timing? Can he maybe make a big... Much. The gold, though. Maybe the the gold got reinvested by Marine Lord. Look, at he's now transitioning to the Arbor Latrius. Okay, okay. That makes sense. It's like a very good upgrade, right? Oh, look at that! Full Arbor Tier switch. Ooh, ooh. But keep in mind, he's behind on production. This will allow him to catch up with this many archery rangers around a keep in the center of the map so he can reinforce faster. And also, the cool thing we're going to see probably coming out from Rainlord next minute is those Royal Institute upgrades, right? Think about what's available there. The stirrups, especially, is a big deal. Oh, look at that. More armor could easily be in there and... Well, still not really using the keep influence, minus 5% there. And well, some knights getting scratched, but not really being killed. And it is baiting attention away from what Marine Lord's doing on the south side. Like, by the time Viper sees this count of Arbor Trees coming, it's going to be about 30. And that that is when it gets scary, because you're going to be outnumbered in that situation. Arbor's pulling across. Prematurely, mind you. I'm going to reveal their plan, and the Knights get in range. One or two, I'm going to be peppered down. But now it looks like it's time to clash in the center in a situation where right now Viper does have the new miracle advantage. But in the coming minute, Marine Lord should have the technological advantage. Okay, uh, upgrades are coming in. Look at that. All the upgrades are coming in for Marine Lord. What? Is everybody right? 37 against 41. Just another cycle finished, and that's going to be a big raid. Viper a bit out of position. Chasing. Royal Knight now jumping. Needs to peel away though. So many knights here. The start a step back into the stealth forest. If he splits up, he'll minimize casualties, but he's going to regroup here. He's also pushing horsemen. A phenomenal choice here with the raw bloodlines. Could be a big deal. But he needs to get on top of the arbitrators and make it a worthwhile try. The arbor count in the meantime, just shredding through Viper's front line. These knights falling in afterwards. You have to look at that arbor count. You have to look at the fact that Marine Lord is the one with the frontal base here. He'll be able to overwhelm Viper. Viper needs to retreat and he needs to do it soon, or it's going to be too little, too late. Oh, he still has some cavalry advantage there, though. Maybe he can fight this one off. Both players now switching into horsemen. Interesting choice, and it feels like our tier count simply so much better. Marine Lord at 32 versus 21 only of the Viper. It's the problem. Is the horseman. Like, he beamed to the punchline. Like, Viper is now reacting to the play. He sees it. He goes, yeah, that actually makes a lot of sense. But Marine Lord has a minute plus ahead of him. He gets the initial horseman out. He gets the upgrade into veteran status. And now he's able to overwhelm. This is where Viper is going to find himself boxed inside his base. Okay, well, you can still retreat a bit more. Upgrades are kind of even more production now, and it just feels like the eco is now the deciding factor. Who has more farms? Who has more food income? It seems like Viper has a small advantage there. Viper has a small advantage in terms of military for the next 50 seconds because crossbow stirrups are there for him. But I don't think Marino is going to look to take a fight in that time. Like, he's actually just establishing control here in the massacre. Village is running back, at least minimize the casualties, but that gets him away from the pocket eco, and it means he's got this increased demand into farmland switch, and he's running out of places to do it. Ooh, that's a lot of exposed villages here at the front as well. How's Viper finding some stuff? Tries to cut off reinforcement, but enough horsemen out there. Nice awareness of Marine Lord. Look at that long queue as well from Marine Lord. He will get onto really good military numbers pretty soon. 
Yeah, he's starting to bulk up. He's almost at 200 pop cap, and Viper is lagging behind him. And you can see the resource reserves as well are looking pretty good from Marine Lord, so you can afford to lose a bunch of troops. Looks like keeps are being established on the northern front on both sides, but that's not where the attention is, the south side. Like, this is where everyone's now fighting. It's going to force that fight in that area. Arbor Tree is trying to get through the Passe gate. It's going to bait Viper into a fight here. Trebuchet's now in the field for Marine Lords, who have the quick breach point. And now it looks like it's going to be a flood out. Horsemen move in range, start to stab onto that Arbitrier formation. And right now, Marine Lord, because he only has Arbors here, his horsemen are away. He cannot take this fight, and it's kind of baffling, actually. Where are the horsemen? He has 19 in the field somewhere, and only three arriving in this fight. Yeah, it's not the numbers that we were expecting, indeed. And Viper now, after his horsemen are dying, needs to disengage here as well. Goes for the line formation. Keep is still helping out. Pop 166 against 180, and now the horsemen are joining the party. So lots of control. Those two outposts are helping out quite a bit. Yeah, they are. Throwing up raids are just sniping him down real fast. And the commitment's mm -hmm. going to be frustrating. Once fortified, they can at least take out the weaker one, but need to be careful not to expose themselves too much. He tries to wrap around on the Trebs, but the instant reaction out of Marine Lord once again just hurting him back into his base. Cheers. Finding the nice kills here. A horseman are moving in again. I think Viper, that's not your greatest Mosh fight bit. ever, though. I don't think the horse numbers are there for him. They're not, and the spread out makes it even worse. And now the Trevor's shaking back away or continue fire onto the production line to deny Viper replacement forces here. Frontline holding for Marine Lord. And quickly, Viper looking less like a snake and more like a sheep, as it seems Marine Lord is his shepherd. Just blocking him back into his base and keeping him locked in at all times in his pen. Oh, but ability here numbers not looking too hot anymore for Marino that is not here. And I think Viper could even consider like mixing in five to 10 spearmen there at the front, but I don't even think he has the barracks to open this one. Abritir numbers looking hot, 33 against 27, and not all of them at the front. Viper is holding this one quite nicely. Where's the Maganel switch up, actually? It's, it's surprising me, Marine Lord, like, there it is. It's finally coming out, two Maganels in a stealth forest. You could lose the entire Arbor Battalion if you're not careful here. Needs to get vision quickly. The horsemen are marching in towards the trebuchet. Maganels are gonna dive forward here. Viper, he's reacting. He's going to turn around to the Maganels instead. The Maganels trying to get in range. One or two shots. He can do a lot of damage. Shot one comes oh, out. One nice dodge. dodge. So Maganel going for the second round. Get a good shot Ooh. out here. Viper steps nice forward, dodge. takes some damage. Now the horsemen are in. The Arbitry is standing their ground. And the Arbors focus fire onto the Maganel. Marine Lord being kept at bay. Viper needs to keep pushing out, though. He needs to find a way to breach this base because the siege workshops and a keep with discounts on the archer rangers in that area. In the meantime, Marine Lord is denying value in the north side while taking this fight in the south. The reason he couldn't actually overwhelm Viper is because he split up his forces to two fronts. Oh, what a great move, though, to take out that keep. Means the horseman production will be more expensive for the Viper from here on. And Abiliteers have to disengage. Diving in to kill those Mangonels made him lose so many of his range units. And all of a sudden, 35 military against over 70. That's the crazy part, right? I was watching this fight. It's like, where's Marine Lord's army? This makes no sense. The count makes no sense. It's because he's performing a two-pronged assault. And he's winning on both fronts now. He re-switches, reallocates to the Western Front and overwhelms. The Spruill is now coming out to make sure there's no counterplay of Maganels himself from Viper, and he is in trouble. This arbitrary count is no longer healthy. The trebuchets continue to push out, and that means more of your infrastructure is going to be going down. And look at that. GG. Viper couldn't even switch into Mangonels himself because Springles were around Marine Lord with a 3-1 lead. And he does it in style. He does it on his signature sieve in a mirror matchup. Marine Lord now finding himself on match point. Viper needs to reach deep and he needs to do it fast. Look at how Marine Lord with the four towns and just got into the villager lead so quickly there. Crazy move. Protected his villagers so nicely while the Viper was still struggling to protect his villagers at all times. The, the crazy part is if you go back to that village account, like when, when we saw that raid of like 10 plus knights splitting up to murder villagers, you can barely see the divot on the village account. That, that <laughs> there, that, that was the effect. That was what I was talking about. Like four TCs in Castle Age, you just don't care because you're pushing so many villagers and it's a bait because Viper never spots the fourth TC that always has him behind in the villager department. Oh, Viper, it took him so much to actually catch up and then they had the even numbers but the setup was so much better it just felt like the royal institute was not used for such a long time where we felt having something like royal bloodlines could have absolutely paid off 
Yeah, I mean, like and this. You know, this I, I was praising Marine Lord for using that a lot. Like some people would like to shout fanboy that it's not. It's just like you both went for all institute and one of you used it and one of you didn't. Marine Lord, if he wins one of the next three games, he's guaranteed to make it to Heidelberg as well and compete in the three hundred thousand dollar tournament that we have there in October. You know, I, Let's I'm, take a look how this is getting approached. I'm a little bit upset with the format. Um, just, to, just because it would have been funny to have a format where Viper flies out to Heidelberg, does the Age of Empires 2 tournament, flies home, and they have to fly out again. <laughs> just to, really griefing him, but yeah, of course, like Viper, like you have to remember, this is like double tournament opportunity for him if he can make it into the finals. Of course, because Beastie's already in that finals, whoever loses here still stands a chance of qualifying via Golden League to the Red Bull World Old Legacy event, so. Always a lot to keep in mind. Make sure you tune in for that low, uh, the third place game rather tomorrow, which we'll be opening up with before we get into the grand finals. But let's focus on the grand finals because you know the Marine Lord, he's looking pretty dominant right now. This is an interesting matchup to me though because I think this is a, a very clear place where Viper can bite back if he plays his boom right. And I have to point out that every time I watch Viper play Hill and Dale, genuinely does not matter the Civ. This guy, like, I don't know. Sometimes I wonder if his, his keyboard is broken because it seems to be hitting the town center shortcut. This guy loves to TC boom. <laughs> yeah. Well, he, he is the guy. Get those two TCs, three TCs, uh, play the long game. And he's not your typical, okay, I will get, like, eight bombards and try to go for one death push. He's more the guy, like, let's raid here with some palace guards. Maybe here some grenadiers. Goes for lots of stables as well. Tries to make horse raids happen. And he, he is the one who likes it messy as well. Even with Chinese, which is quite atypical. Yeah, one thing that Viper actually does more frequently than most players of the Chinese is he rushes that cast lage and he grabs those relics. And that is double value in this matchup because it is an HRE player. I'm not sure if he wants to do this eco race though because I already said the three letters that usually mean no aggression is a bad idea. H R E, like if you if you just give them a free early game, they've got the biggest smile on their face because they don't want to fight. They want to boom up because they want to get towards those relics with regnets and they want to get the Palace of Swabia online ASAP. Yeah, and Palace of Swabia, we've seen it from BCQ. I think like three days ago on a stream, he reached Imperial Age at ten minutes thirty seconds. It's ridiculous. That's sometimes the moment where you reach Castle Age if you're Chinese. If you played like Song Dynasty double TC boom. Yeah, that's a remarkably fast timing. I feel like the only time you see a better average is on water-based maps, which we never see in competitive right now. You know, things like War and Island, where the HRE can get ludicrous timings on their Imperial up. But, you know, 10 is absolutely ridiculous on a land map. And Marine Lord, well, BC's got a smile on his face right now. He's going, yay! Because Arkham Chapel's being built. We know... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> We, we know we know at least one player who only builds Ark and Chapel. And, you know, it's interesting, actually, because on the other side, if Viper's playing HRE, he, he more often than not goes Mind Work Palace. Ah, well, on aggressive maps, maybe. I think on Hill and Dale, I would expect him to go Aachen as well, especially, as you can see, that Aachen is pretty crazy. Town Center, Berries, Woodline, and Gold. So basically the ideal scenario for yourself. And I think Aachen makes lots of sense sense there over the mine work nice deer push here by the viper gets at least four deers reasonably close to his mill and now we are dropping what looks to be <laughs> what's that unknown activation <laughs> all right i love how it's just labeled unknown activation yeah there's nothing to activate here it's dead just just eat it so imperial academy first and i'm expecting barbican at the front of the base one issue i do see from viper is he tends to be a little bit late on walling himself in but that shouldn't matter too much in this matchup because the HRE doesn't tend to aggress you. Yeah, typically they want to play, as you said, a completely untouched game. Let's start the game after you had Swabia for 10 minutes mm -hmm. or like Swabia for five minutes and at least two relics in there. And then they are the, the happy Romans. Yeah, HRE players are like the, the that friend we have that says, let's play the game with 10,000 starting resources, right? It was like, yeah, yeah, let's let's just like tech everything up. Wouldn't it be fun to play a hyper late game? Wouldn't that be fun, Nilly? Let's let's skip the early mid game entirely. Uh, every person that I know that ever suggested that got unfriended by me. <laughs> I think if you're below ten, I will allow it, but those are not my friends. 
Was that one your weird habits when you were a little kid? Mine was building neat bases. You know? Like, you, ha like it, you could have roads going along. Like, oh, yeah, all the houses need to be together. Oh, look at the racks all lined up perfectly on the road. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> really? I thought you'd be on board for that, like, German level of efficiency there. That's not efficient. Yeah? Like, you, well, you know where to find... Like, you could just literally select all your racks and you click them all out. They're all the organized oh, together. That's what you have away. hotkeys for. Well, I was, I was less than 10 years old, nearly. What are a hotkey? Well, hotkeys existed even when you were 10. Yeah, but my clearly my left hand didn't. <laughs> well, okay. Um, yeah, at least you grew a bit older. And we see professional scouts out of Marine Lord and a stable. So it's going for some aggression. Obviously won't do too well against... What seems to be a song boom. I would be surprised if he finds too much. And I also would be surprised if he goes for more than one horseman here, honestly. I mean, who needs more than one horseman? I'm just thinking TCs, TCs, TCs. And, uh, you know, it's it's not tender. It's not care. It's just town centers day and night. Viper, in this situation, I'm expecting three TCs. I, I can sense it coming, right? Really? It's a ripple and force. Okay. He loves three TCs. I've seen him do four TC China. It's... It's always four or three when he plays on Hill and Dale. Okay, well, it will be interesting for sure. And still didn't collect enough stone, is heavily on it though. I owe to get the stone income pretty quick. Is there as well. Scout a bit here to harass, but Marine Lord doesn't really care. And that seems like a Swabia build, right? Because he will have so much food. Yeah, he's not coming out. He's not playing the game. I actually quite like the idea of pro scouts on this map simply because the alternative is building farms really quick and you drain your initial wood supply. Notice one big difference in Hill and Dale compared to like, you know, on the previous S tier tournament we had is they took away one of the big tree lines. It's a baby tree line now, which means you have to come off your high ground quicker and anything you do, can do to delay that by off shifting your wood costs is definitely worth considering doing. Okay, yeah, makes lots of sense. Regnet's now at the front. Also, barracks being built. That's something I didn't expect from Marine Lord, I have to say. What, what is that one achieving? I think he's worried about knights in the midfield. Like, I'm, I'm trying to think what else this could be about. Uh, maybe he's paranoid you can use a possibility. Like, I just don't see Viper aggressing him. Like, he's li literally walled himself in. He's gone for the second but, TC. But There's going to be a third one. It uh, okay, but that's still pretty weird, right? If you are expecting something yeah. new, like, why would you think barracks makes sense? A man at arms? With marching drills? A man, a man at arms that good against Tungunu? I mean, they're decent as a front line to push him away, and then you just use archers as a secondary line, but like, I, I think it's just like you have good flexibility with the racks, and this makes sense if you don't want to build a Burgrave, because like, the other thing to consider is it, he's either going to push Yugnu, or he's going to look to go up and build Lancers. And if he builds Lancers, Spearman can deal with that, right? So mm -hmm. I think it's the safest unit when you're playing blind. And he is playing blind, right? Like, everything's been walled in now. He can't check what Viper's doing. Though I just realized, tomorrow, 15 GMT, we'll have the third place match, mm -hmm. which is basically worth $24,000. And after that, we have the finals, which is worth $10,000. Yeah. <laughs> best of five, $24,000. $24, and best of seven... I think it's the final. Oh, finals is even best of nine. Yes. Or 10,000. Yeah, there you go. Best of nine. We'll allow someone to play. Uh, you know, if you get to game nine, you get to play another Civ. There you go. That's your reward for a very, very long series. And you definitely want to check that out, folks, because tomorrow is incredibly important. It will qualify two players, but those two players will be qualified across two series as with Beastie making it through into the grand finals and already being qualified for Red Bull Wallalo Legacy. It means that the third, fourth place match will decide the second person invited to the big... $300,000 land later this year in Germany. Also, all the seedings will be better for you in the upcoming tournaments, right? Road to Heidelberg, we will have $44,000 on the line spread over the next three, four months. And, well, it simply guarantees you, if you win this one, I think you're basically guaranteed to always have seed one in all the tournaments. You do fairly well. Uh, looks like, I, I don't want to get into too many details because it's like there's lots of convoluted parts to that, but um, keep in mind that once you're qualified, you're put in a separate part of the bracket for those those games. So you just go up against other big winners, basically, which would be uh, Beastie, Lenok, and then the two that win here. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, like Marine Lord and B Security will probably avoid each other quite a bit, regardless. So you're probably facing off people like Lenok. Kind of weird that Lenok is the one. Oh, oh. oh. Can you reach over? Uh, yes, you can. Like, <laughs> and. That Ten, I, I hope that's classified as a long sword. Good God. <laughs> you know, imagine thinking you're safe behind like a wooden wall. Clearly someone didn't stack these palisades close enough together if you can stick a sword all the way through them. Uh, observer checking, checking as well. Like, does that uh, one have range? Doesn't seem like it. Palace of Swabia now being rushed out. Pulling quite some villagers. Will be in imp timing around 11.20 here, I would think. So pretty solid for Marine Lord. Viper obviously ahead by 20 when it comes to villagers. Now going for Spearman, which surprises me a bit. And this not the latest castle age timing ever. This feels really odd from Viper because he didn't go three TCs, right? He stopped at two. Mm -hmm. And Atypical. And he didn't play aggression at all, which means Marine Lord is going to get four relics. He doesn't need four relics, but... He knows Viper likes them. Like, Viper, if I had to label one player the golem when it comes to relics, right, one player that finds them to be as precious, it has to be Viper. And this is going to be frustrating for him. He's just, I, I, it feels so un Viper like to not be getting any economical one up. He always looks for a greedy opportunity, and he's not going to find it in this game. Well, oh, 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 oh. Well, he'll get away. Spearman in there. Wait, what? 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 Scout? Oh my God, no! The aggro! Marine Lord, he all aggroed him back in. Mistakes have been no. made. You know what happened? Viper deleted his own Spearman to continue doing damage what? and then deleted because he knew he couldn't get out there but didn't click the, sp the scouts far away. Oh my god. Yeah, and, and they all aggroed in as a result of that once the knight came close enough. A nice pull in by Marine Lord there. And it looks like that prelate is going to make his way back. He's like, woohoo! Double scout! Sounds like the most underwhelming conversion in the world, but actually a frustrating conversion here for viper well it's not killing the prelate now right because of exactly. that seven more though or maybe actually one stab we'll see. okay Lang's neck so here prelate around. Angry. he's like that was my dad you will die for this <laughs> i just love how clowny they look when they rush down hills like this one lines neck alone isn't going to do enough though so he needs to be careful but that is now four relics bank folks that is a ridiculous income now from marine lord being up at 800 passive gold per minute Viper now goes for Spearman, some palace guards, but what is he achieving? Also, only two town center. It feels so. Uh, like, it, it's a bit between both worlds, no? He builds an army that never does damage instead of is this, going for the third town center. This feels like just Spearman, Nesta Bees, and then you're assuming your opponent's only going to build Langstack, which uh, it kind of works if your opponent only ever builds Langstack, but he's already built knights. So, like, you're going to struggle to defend these nest of bees while being aggressive. I, mm, I don't know, dog. I don't know. I, this doesn't feel like it's it for Viper. I, I was expecting three TCs. I would have understood him being on his high ground for three TCs, but two TCs just doesn't have the same hit. It's still Viper 20 villagers ahead. Yeah, he is behind a solid golden come due to the relics there. Uh, which, which negates soon. the lead, right? Because it's 800 gold per minute. So that's effectively 20 extra villagers. And also, Marine Lord is playing as the HRE, 40% gather rate increase. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's not oh, even close. We'll make it home. Yeah, seems like Marine Lord, Marine Lord already has the better economy. Plus, obviously, a full age ahead. Look at his resource in the bank. Also yeah. goes for tight barns now. Ooh. One thing he does have to be careful of, though. Someone that easily gets glazed over and overlooked when people think about how strong the HRE economy is. You do gather 40% quicker, yes. But that means your initial resources are gone 40% quicker, right? The problem with that is you have limited wood on the high ground, and that's why Viper's now playing that midfield. He wants to box Oh no, you this in. forest is running dry pretty soon, KP. <laughs> You're I, absolutely right. I mean, you say that. Look at the amount of trees falling, okay? It kind of is, to be honest. He's already done the baby tree line, right? That's completely gone. It's still 30 trees, so more than 5,000 wood there, or over 30 trees. And I believe that he can still produce something, especially because his army will not really cost a lot of wood here early on. And I simply see Viper, yeah, going for Spearman, Crossbow. Feels like a reasonable composition, but it's all going to be Castle Age units. Yep, which means he has to get value right now, pushing in. But he doesn't have any static defenses to give him a staging point, And that is the freest nest of bees I've ever seen in my life. Thank you very much. I'll be taking that. 
Our oh, villagers, well, they will take the volley. We'll get peppered up a bit, but easily can go back. And this is an easy, can, can we, easy clear up. Can we zoom back in for the Viper fans? This fight looked less one-sided when we didn't see the second round of Marine Lord troops. <laughs> Ay, 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 completely killed here. And Viper, it, it felt like he didn't really have the clear game plan. How to address this one, or the game plan simply arrived a bit late. The imp timing, obviously, from Marine Lord, pretty damn clean. 11 minutes, 20 seconds or something. Viper to town center. He was ahead by villi in villagers for quite some time, but still relics uncontested. Granary, nice for the late game setup, but Viper, he will be stuck in Castle Age for so long. Full map control for Marine Lord as well. I don't see a lot of stuff going right for the Viper right now. This kind of felt like one of those situations where Viper's signature reactionary style, where he's very good at countering an opponent, backfired. It almost felt like he began committed to an idea of what he wanted to do, and then halfway through decided he needed to address what Marine Lord was doing when he saw the tech ups. And it meant that he never got his full economical value. I think three TCs would have made more sense here, or one TC into Zhugnu push. That is very hard, the secondary choice, because you're up against emergency repairs. But the fact that he just floated this mid ground is why he's now miles behind Marine Lord. Hmm. Even population with five relics, with two of them in the Regnant's Cathedral yep. against none. And now the flood through. Look how quickly he reaches. Coming in. So many troops here, and he just ignores him. He moves to the back line, deal the range units, and the lag's neck will clean up the front. Viper in dire straits here because his military force is being tripled up, and the effective HP on each of these units from Marine Lord is substantially higher than Viper's counterparts. Chase through onto the gold lines, splits up to look for clues. He wants to butcher the ecos. Just a few lags that can do heavy damage if they get access. Villagers being pulled back, but Viper losing several in the meantime. And Marine Lord approaching that 100 eco unit figure where he will be vastly ahead of Viper. Uh oh, and that's going to be some dead villagers here at the top as well. Spimana trying to chase it down. Viper obviously stays into this in this one. He knows how much there is on the line in the set, but now sacred sites are being taken behind this one as well. And obviously with the Swabia, villager count is going to be equalized pretty soon. And I just want you to look at those farms. Like, look at the count of farms there. That's a lot of farms, right? Not much wood left. Yeah. He's in trouble. And Marine Lord just identified it when he wrapped in here. Now he needs to move fast. You can see what Viper's doing in the northern corner. He's actually securing himself a wood stock in the back side of the map. But that is going to be the next focus from Marine Lord. He won't try to dive the high ground. He's going to shift to the north side because if he denies wood, then Viper's dead. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Two Imperial officials only, by the way, for Viper now. So two got sniped there. Pretty ugly scenario there for our Norwegian. And, well, still 50 population lead, but those are still not done with the raiding here. Those three horsemen finding quite, quite some kills. Pretty nice moves for Viper now. I think we'll finally deal with those. We can take a look at the center, but look at that. All three sacred sites now in Marine Lord control. That's How much gold is he getting per minute? Like 1,200 now? 1,000 gold per minute. Passive. But because the third sacred site should get decap, there is a unit on there. But for the moment, like, I think all three are technically capped at the moment. So he's getting 1,100 gold per minute. Wait, no, he got... Oh, yeah, you're right. 12, yeah, he got the fifth relic. I forgot about that. He actually yoinked that one from the back corner. You're right. 1,200. We'll go down 1,100 now. Zero H, but Zero HP Horseman wins the fight? Yes. Uh, so so this is some, this is something that people don't believe in, Nilly, is paranormal activity. Uh, the ghost... Uh, Vengeful Ghost, in fact, decided that it wanted to take its own vengeance upon what killed it. It's, um, it's very Zero unfortunate. Zero HP. Who are you going to call? Exactly. Nobody, because Ghostbusters aren't real. Ghostbusters? They're not real. Ghostbusters are not real? Nope. But you just said ghosts are real. That's a bigger problem than you really realize, right? The Zero HP units. If there's no one to clean them up, we're in trouble. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Well, uh, army a bit over ambitious over here. Land snakes are coming around. Horsemen are coming around as well. Now we finally see some more imp upgrades flying in. Economy setup, pretty beautiful for Marine Lord, who's also floating quite some wood and gold. So not unlikely that Siege will be added pretty soon as well. Well, Viper though with a 40 population lead. And we already did some weird cast where we kind of did the caster move. Where we already kind oh, of implied cast cast, a potential it? winner here. But actually, uh -huh. Viper is still absolutely in this one. Looking less like a winner, more like a wiener right now, because Marine Lord has a big issue. Where is his farms? Like, he, he hasn't transitioned. His food is, is a little bit problematic. He hasn't got the same number of farms online yet. 
You can see he's trying to get the wood. He has surplus. It's the space factor. He's only now setting it fully up. Look at all these fresh farms being built. That was the gap. That was what was missing. And that's why Viper right now has the pop cap lead. Oh, look at that. Viper it still goes for solid, solid control. Now finally at four Imperial officials again. There Build. could be some dead villagers. I Build. don't think it will be cancelled. What? I think he can f finish it. Hopefully yeah, he I shifted do. around to try and make sure he didn't get enveloped, right? So they can't maximize damage. So keep goes up. He'll hold in this area. Needs to go for the garrison. There's a lot of villagers here. Disposable resource producers, as I like to refer to them when you're playing HRE. <laughs> They're so cheap, I don't care. Well, how, how are you playing Abyssin then? Uh, I mean, it's like, it just doesn't, it doesn't hit the same as Village Printer, you know? Okay. Like, it well, just... Spirit way now. To put it in a lore perspective, nearly, like, the Abbasids and their cheaper food, like, requirement for villages feels like they're just starving their people. Whereas, I don't know, like, from the HRE lore perspective, they've just got, like, this giant love hotel pushing out villages. Uh, by the way, I just realized, like, we were talking about, like, wood control. There's only one neutral wood per player. Yes. Maybe you mentioned earlier, but, like, I, I want to point it out again. Like, if you control the bottom for the Viper, Viper wins this game quite easily, actually. Mm -hmm. And that's why the keep is important here. If he can't go for the keep, he can't mm -hmm. access it. And also, keep in mind, Viper's been off the wood. Like, look at his income. I don't know what he's been doing, but he, he doesn't like wood. He doesn't like animals either. He hates wildlife. <laughs> this, is, this is only one wood line. I've never seen that one before. It's absolutely fair, but your civilization pick might have been a bit different there if you knew that <laughs> beforehand. Yeah, but all the upgrades and Viper, he gets maybe into his ideal army composition. I actually start to like Viper's position. As a former programmer, I can I can speak to what this is, Nilly. Uh, it's a, an if condition in the code. If name is Marine Lord or Viper, uh, give only two wood lines. The reason being is otherwise they'll take over an hour to figure out this game. Okay, okay. So n zero wood lines in a Viper versus B security game. Exactly, exactly. Nice. Just, we, 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 we rigged it. We're like, no, this game, they take too long. They take so long, it goes over now, an and then they ask us for a five minute break. Like, come on. Hmm. By the way, in HM Press 2, there's a tournament called Hidden Cup, where basically everyone gets a hidden name and then they play, and only after the tournament it's revealed who they are. I think this would be pretty easy in Area 4 because whoever builds hand cannoneers is going to be the Viper. Yeah, I could see that. I, I would just point out with that tournament, if at least not one player is named Spartacus, then it's been done wrong. Uh, I and personally, been done wrong. yeah, okay, that, I'm, I'm sorry, Hidden Cup sucks. You, you need to call every player Spartacus, or it's just not real. Uh, that could be confusing if everyone was named the same. That's the idea. Never know. Okay, boiling oil, boiling oil. Now helping out Jung in the back there. He Only one care. keep. The Zhuk Nu need to be careful because the front line's already gone. A few lag stake are in there and the cleave damage will add up fast. The spread out as well chases off the bombard. The split up the forces here. Marine Lord is going to do a lot of damage to Zhuk Nu count because now it's mainly man at arms and a few lag stake and he's not microing against this lag stake. So he's taking heavy hits into his range formation here. I can't believe how much damage a few remnant troops are doing, but it is working. Spearman at the front, at least buffering a bit, but it was a bit late indeed. It felt like someone split in the second row could have been done. It just felt like the damage output was not there. I'm a bit surprised. I would have expected those land snakes to fall a bit quicker. Hand can near count simply not there. Only at three and eight more in the queue. This doesn't feel like Viper right now. If we, if we hit the names, this isn't Viper right now. Like, we are 23 minutes in the game. You are China and you don't have 10 plus hand cannoneers yet. Those just are the horses indeed, and that's their sound. And Bombards are now trying to defend this one, keep in some danger. Nice save of, the, of those villagers here by the Viper. And it just feels like if we go to the very long game, gold will be better. And wood control, uh, actually like this game can't go into an hour. Because no. we will run dry on wood in fewer than 10 minutes. Yeah, neither of these sieves get wood out of trade, right? So yeah, you're kind of stuck in there on this one. You're going to have to fight tooth and nail for every tiny piece of resource. And, oh my god, this push onto the bombard is futile. Keeping the center goes down, not able to repair it. Needs to be careful. The backstab coming in on the Siege Workshop can be big here. Hand Cannon is also in a little bit of a pickle. They can't Enough give over ground. Though. They're being pinched on two sides here. You're probably going to see the Siege Workshop go down. And we talked about wood as a budget affair. A 300 wood structure going down is not cheap in this situation. Oh, 
Oh, Bombards, they wanted to do some shooting, but it's denied. Horsemen are closing down the distance. Now some repair happening. Oh and look God. at that, all the land snakes fighting so many kills. Maybe now getting close to the villagers. This could be a bloodbath. Snakes versus snakes. Here is land snakes. Look to take down the snake himself. The villager count just is disintegrated in this situation. And the hand cannon is are barely holding ground anymore. And remember, if these trades are even, the land snake are worthwhile. Because if there's one thing Marine Lord couldn't afford for an eternity right now, it is a heavy gold cost unit. Boy, 3k gold in the bank still for Marine Lord. And now the big push at the top. This is actually the main story because Viper, if he loses this area, he will lose his wood. And therefore the game. It's a little bit too late to think shoulda, woulda, coulda, because right now Viper is at risk of being put into that third, fourth place match. He wants to make it that finals. He wants to stand a chance of going to the Red Bull World War Legacy event to compete for $500,000 or the lion's share of it, because of course he's already qualified for AOE 2, but this would be his AOE 4 slot as well. And he already voiced that he isn't 100% sure if he tried to qualify, if he wouldn't make it for Golden League. Will maybe focus on AOE 2 mainly. Raid is coming in. Uh -oh. oh, look at that. Moving. <laughs> too many Musical to chairs. Yeah, time to do the shuffle. While you're doing that shuffle, it looks like Marine Lord is going to slide in the Yoga line. Oh my. That's a problem. An unanswered problem. The boiler comes out. But you need a second salvo to kill him off here. He's going to chase you away. Viper needs to be careful. Look at his wood right now. He's down to zero. He's at zero wood. This is troubling right now. Oh, that's really tricky now. Let's take a look. How Viper is actually replenishing this area. The Zero Wood indeed still can't repair his keep over here. Only three Imperial officials as well. Hand Cannoneers and Spearmen, the only thing that he's going for. Now 30 in the bank, it's barely anything. It's a baby level of wood right there. Both sides struggling, but only one side has to care. I mean, <laughs> it's just Langstack. Just Langstack for days. He's like, look, Viper, Snakes, it's you, it's you. And Viper right now doesn't want to see it because it cleans up his Spearman line. It cleans up his hand cannon. It's the flood through now of Langstack backed up by Horsemen to overwhelm. These pricey hand cannons are going to flop to the ground dead and the bombards might be falling alongside them. He envelops him, tries to backstab him here, but once the lags that get in, once they set their mind on swinging that sword, heads go flying and Chinese are dying as that is the match point. Marine Lord takes it 4-1. Marine Lord versus Beastie Curie tomorrow in a best of nine finals to decide who is going to be winning Golden League and the lion's share of $125,000. And, well, Viper, he can at least try to keep the dream of attending two Red Bull events alive this year because, of course, that third, fourth place match up against Puppy Paul, whoever wins there will take the second qualification slot from Golden League for Red Bull Wallalo Legacy. But, my God, what a series coming out. Marine Law, when he started to warm up, he was on fire. And I just love how clear-cut his strategy was once he got his hands on all those relics. Unlimited land snakes forever and ever. Phenomenal play there to overcome the snake himself. I said there's so much better eco setup, right? As we said, five relics there and the golden come just crazy good. Viper didn't really have the answers, couldn't get to his ideal army composition. I'm, I'm not even sure. I think maximum pop that he reached was like 180. Bombard cannon count, I think the highest that I saw was like at three. And we will see tomorrow. Be security Marine Lord fighting for the 30k. Both of them making it to the 300k tournament in October. Marine Lord, congratulations. And tomorrow, the biggest game actually in their career.